Happy Saturday, everybody. It's Neves here on the DZG stream. I'm co-hosting with my fabled friend, Faye. Faye, how are you doing tonight? Wait, so this thing is the mainstream right now. I don't want to be. What the? What not, man? I had red meat. Okay, so uh, just to let you guys know, again, another sponsored stream brought to you by our sponsor, uh, Buff. That's exclamation point B-U-F-F -F in Twitch chat. Follow the link and you will get to reap some rewards, benefits, uh, you know, for a multitude of games that you play. Um, but it does look like we're getting into this draft with an ash band on the side of literal monkey's water. Faye, how do you feel about that ash band? And Ash is a pretty good pick right now, seeing as of how all the items are working. And she can have Global Presence, which can help uh, aid the top laner that's push pushing, seeing as they're currently in Holebreaker meta. So I feel as if it's a pretty good takeaway, especially since DZG Elysium likes to pick Ash as well. Yeah, I actually haven't really seen uh, much Ash. Personally, I would really be working on, like, the Gopamine um, bands. And I know Morpheus is, like, Kaylin is just, like pretty stellar so like the ash ban coming out of nowhere very interesting diana not being left open also is very weird i think from the side of literal monkey's water their jungler has about a 71 percent win rate on that champion so kind of an odd ban i think from um red side at the moment i'm kind of just looking at the um 
Oh, and then we have a Zeri band too. She's been really popular as well, and a Lux band coming out as well. I feel uh, like the only reason why we ban Ash is if we're looking, is if she counters something that we want to do. Yeah, so uh, Literal Monkey's Waters with the response to Jinx Hyper Carry with the Senna Cho. I'm actually very interested to see if that's Cho bottom, um, as uh, I actually think that's a pretty insane um, damage lane, but uh, we shall see. Uh, not really a lot of support Cho, though, so I actually think that Senna is going to be um, support for Literal Monkey Waters on Pink Penguin. I think is uh, their support, but uh, I guess we shall see. Ideally, they want to do fasting Senna here because Senna farm got nerfed this patch, so it's not as good as it used to be, and it was already pretty bad. Uh, I don't know if I'd like the Cho bot lane with the fasting Senna. I would prefer something like a Seraphine or even the Lux, but they already banned the Lux. So my next best option with the fasting Senna would either be a Tom Kench or a, or the. Uh, the Seraphine, depending yeah. on what the team wants. I do think Tom Kinch is still disabled. I might be wrong. Um, I know there were quite a bit of bugs, but it does look like the Seraphine is taken away. So if that does end up being Fasting Senna uh, in the support role, I actually do think we might see double 80 carry bottom Senna along with um, something else, maybe. Maybe like a Jin. I've seen that lane actually we do quite a number on to, some players. Uh, Senna Scion. Good old Senna Scion coming back I really back hope life. not. I don't want to see that. Hallbreaker support Scion. It's coming in hot. I can feel it. <laughs> oh, the spicy. That would well, actually um, fit a big brain. Gragas is actually a really good flex pick on the side of Elysium. Can really put it mid top and jungle. Uh, and I do know that Elysium's jungler kind of plays some of those like off meta stuff. We saw his poppy a couple weeks ago. Um, the volley bear coming out clutch for them. Uh, so... Pretty good pickup, I think, on the side of Elysium. Does look like the Malphite ban targeting top lane now. Uh, I would assume maybe Cho. I still think Cho's Cho's got to be going mid or support. Like, I don't know why you would ban Malphite if you have your top lane. Like Cho, kind of like eat eats him alive. So like, kind of a weird pick there, honestly. Little do you know, it's gonna be a Cho at the jungle. It could. Well, where's Udir going then, Faye? Up. Down I top would lane. love to see it. I want it. all breaker to your top. Sign me up. <laughs> that's some quality content right there. Now that's what I call content. Content. You ain't got no mana. All right. Let's see what literal monkey waters picks for their R four. I mean, what they pick here is going to reveal a lot about the comp because either they pick their mid laner and keep it ambiguous between the Cho get their Udir. Or they pick one that, or the pick one of the other roles that we're not really too sure on right now. They pick the medley and they keep it ambiguous. All right, putting bets. Where's Cho'Geth going, Neebs? Oh, uh, I think Cho's going top, and I, I think they're seeing with this final pick. If DZG has a response for the victor, if he if they don't, I think that um. They'll probably pick another AD carry here. That would be my guess. Yeah, that'd uh, be but I mean, Victor could go top. Cho can go mid. Like, right now, they have a lot of flexibility on the side of literal monkey water. Yeah, like, the the Udir and the Cho got this was kind of able to throw you through loop because, well, realistically, you're going to assume Udir's going to go jungle. I have seen Udir's top in the past, and I wouldn't be surprised if I saw him top today. It's not even that he's uh, bad in, in the lane. He he survives. We have a Nico answer for the victor, which I personally am a big fan of, especially against this kind of comp. I think Goba means Nico's clean. My issue with the thing is, like, the pick into victor is victor just outranges you eventually. Um, and then on top of that, like, I mean, he's just going to out-DPS you. Like, yeah, you're going to blast him with your combo, but, like... He just drops the stun down, you know, ray beams you, hits the Q, and then it's over. It does look well, like it it's going to be Togas Senna bottom. Well, then. Okay, hear me That's out, though. Spicy. Hear me out, though. What if it's actually Victor Senna bottom? Chose mid, Mundo top. I, I don't know if my brain can handle that right now. And a Hallbreaker Udir in the jungle to start. 
You know, the other night when I was playing ranked, I saw a Scion go hole breaker in jungle, and that. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if yeah, I saw a quality content a item, honestly. It's just so cost effective. With every fighter item being nerfed right now, um, you know, because everything lost its mitigation stats, you know, 50 attack damage, 400 HP, and then scaling resistances as the ga game goes on when you're solo pushing. Like, even if you have to group, um, the attack damage and health itself is just huge. Uh, oh, yeah. So I, I think the item is definitely overtuned. I can't wait for its nerf next patch. I'm really sick of seeing it, honestly. Look, um, push meta is a disease. I think roaming meta is disease, which has literally been the meta for the last three years. So, uh, yo, Riot, fix your game. Thanks. You know, um, uh, I know you're saying earlier the the Nico and the Victor thing, but when when we like put the comp together, I think the Nico here is pretty solid with the Seraphine, but we're banking on Seraphine getting some fat ulties to set up for the rest of her team. I would definitely agree to that. Um, and there's a lot of displacement with the Gragas, so I think the side of Elysium has really good zone control, followed by um, a huge split push threat in the Trundle. Um, who should be able to deal with the Mundo, right? You just steal yeah. stats, 1v1 them, you win. Yeah. Um, same thing if Cho goes to the side lane to hold. Should be okay. Ideally, I think eventually Victor actually holds against Trundle. Um, just because, like, yeah, he can kind of run you down, but, like, not really if you're playing correctly with the wave state. Um, but I do think Elysium overall, team fight wise Jinx gets the LDR, hopefully second item. Um, I think fighting front to back against this team comp and just making sure you can actually kill a tank is like very important. So I think cracking into LDR on the side of Jinx, fight front to back, even if you're single targeting one frontliner, like as long as they're dying, you're going to be okay, right? Yeah, ideally, like that's just what you need because this team, so like they have a really beefy team, right? And that's really neat, but their only damage is going to be Victor and Senna, and they do have tools to try to get to the Victor and Senna. And I don't know if their team has enough of an answer to peel for the two of them, you know? Also, with Victor and Senna sitting so far back, like, the range advantage that they currently have actually kind of separates them even more, right? Because, like, yeah. if your carries are, are way behind your tanks, like... Gragas steps forward and just knocks them even farther back. And then their front line on the side of Little Monkey's Waters has to dive deeper into the zone control team of Elysium, right? Yeah. Um, so I think, honestly, I still give the draft over to Elysium. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Would you agree, disagree? Yeah, I agree because they have a lot of disruption. They have a lot of zone control and a lot of tools to kind of make them dance to their own tune, you know? Like... You have the Seraphine ulti, you have... Jinx even has her own range that isn't anything to scoff at. If you want... If they try to go in, like, if they try to push in more, they have the Nico ulti to zone. Gragas can just push them back. Then you have to work around Trundle's pillar, and you don't want to get close to Trundle either when you're in these fights. Yeah, I think bot lane, though, honestly, win con bot lane, like, if Senna ever hits W, I think it's over. Like, whoever gets hit by the W, like, Cho just ruptures into silence, into full combo. Like, that is a lot of damage that Elysium has to look out for. Yeah, but to be fair, they have a Seraphine who has a good range, and Jinx can always, like, sit back a little bit more, too. Yeah. Okay, it does look like we're moving into the spectator delay. Um, so, Faye and I both agree. We think Elysium has the draft, has to play the game correctly, good zone control, and we might see an Elysium victory here. If not, you know, Little Monkey Waters brings us to game two, and I love some content. So, anyway, uh, remember, exclamation point B-U-F-F, -F, Twitch chat. Get your link, follow it, get your rewards. We'll see you after the break. This is Neebs and Faye. See you guys in two minutes.
All right, welcome back, everybody, on this fine Saturday again. It's Neves and Faye. Faye, are you ready for this game? Let's heck and go. Everyone's heading out to do the little five-point thing. No invades, which means the early game is going to be pretty boring. Going into this, what are we expecting from the lane matchups? How are you feeling about this jungle, uh, this jungle thing? Um, if matchup. Trundle yeah. had taken lethal, he beats. Oh dear. I I don't like I I mean I don't I don't know how I feel about the PTA. Like it used to be the go-to myself, former jungler, still kind of my lethal tempo to me is just way stronger. In my opinion, uh, you know, and obviously I'm not the players, I'm not the coach. I find it very odd that Trundle did not go top and they did not flex the Gragas into the jungle. I think that's a better matchup. Um, in the top lane, but like again, Gragas, once he gets Fimble Winter, uh, or you know, that tier stacked up has the mana, very difficult to kill him. Does deal with the Trundle poke or the Mundo poke very well, so um, just kind of interesting there, I think, in my opinion. I don't see any other weird rune. Um, kind of interested about Silent taking Airy, I think that's really good. I do think the Guardian might have been better, um, but hopefully, Gopamine can uh, stop the first strike uh, buff before, you know, Victor's getting a lot of stuff in, like damage-wise, but again, you know, Victor just kind of outranges the Nico, so, you know, we'll have to see how that goes. But Honestly. doesn't really miss E on the Silent. Go ahead, sorry. Honestly, I'm looking at the bot lane, I almost feel as if Silent himself could have taken the first strike, considering there's a lot of free poke opportunity on this Cho'Gath and the Senna early. Yeah, early game, you know, Senna's range isn't really the best, but it does look like Morpheus is making some good trades in the bot lane as Nico also goes for the Q. Cho about half HP walking forward. They're it does look like about an all-in on the Senna, she gets rooted! Have to get oh, that was beautiful, honestly. That was, they just did not respect the early, like, they, these two just don't have any early game power. They shouldn't be trying to step up like that. They have to respect what Jinx and Seraphine can do. Seraphine's damage early is very respectable, especially because we took the Airy. Well, yes, we could have gone first strike. We could have gone guardian. Airy still does have its uses in this lane. Yeah, thinking back now, um, I think that Airy is like a good uh, medium, right? Like you get the damage, the extra damage, like very early on. The shielding later comes in handy and like it scales, right? Like you take first strike, you know, late game, it's going to be a little more beneficial because you're getting more items with the more damage you're doing. Um, and then Guardian, like, is good, like, early game because, like, you're providing more defense. But, you know, seeing this Cho, Senna, short range, like, very low HP, very easy to abuse with Jinx Rockets. I actually think the Airy play was exceptionally smart by Elysium support Silent Elements. Oh, yeah. I, I'm definitely really like that, especially because now they get the first blood, which is really good for the Jinx here. Getting that early lead is a big, big deal for this champion, because once we get the three items, we can just... It's going to be really hard for the front line to deal with the Jinx, basically. Yes, and again, I think, you know, you go crack in the LDR, like, even though you're single targeting, you're not really, like, AoE damaging early. I, I actually think just bursting a... a... Looks like Nico gets the root. Trundle running in. Pillars on cooldown, I believe. Looks like Udyr's gonna walk away, but with really? 100 HP. It wasn't comfortable, but he walked away. He's ready to proc that turtle stance and get the hell out of there, honestly. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're back up to the island in top lane, and as predicted, this Gragas is struggling to keep up with the Mundo poke, especially because we started here, which is. A little on the greedy side. I'm not too sure I'm a big fan of that. A lot of trade happening here in mid lane. Gopamine almost killing the victor. Yeah, it's just really... like He's just so short on that damage by just a little bit. But Gopamine's just like, let me throw my clone, take this tower damage, and let me see if I can get it. But uh, unfortunately doesn't. Um, the Electrocute really coming in clutch there. But, you know, forcing this victor out early, getting his TP, like, very good play by the side of Gopamine's, uh, you know, or Elysium's Gopamine, excuse me. Something good to get out these summoner spells, since it relieves a lot of pressure from the map, because even though we can't TP to wards and everything, we can still TP to towers and still try to make those aggressive plays. So, it's a good thing, especially now, because this is a lot more pressure for Gopamine, who still has their TP.
Yeah, um, really good back timing on the side of Gopamine. Unsure, but I would almost be positive that he did set that up. It does look like a Root's going down. Action in every lane right now is camera pans. Udyr flash stuns onto the Jinx. Senna gets some damage. Doesn't look like they have anything after the Udyr flashing. Kind of a waste of utility here. As Morpheus looks to trade back, but it does look like the play is dead. Man, what a waste of utility right there. But it does look like Cho might actually die to this. Nope. It was a Man, very so aggressive close. and overzealous play. Like, they're cuddling their tower, basically, and Udyr flashes virtually under to try and look for something that just isn't there. They didn't even get... The only summer they got was Seraphine's exhaust, so it's really not even worth it at all. Yeah, and I do think um, Cho actually ended up blowing the ignite. Uh, maybe not, but pretty good ultimate by the side of MBLD, but... Again, the Mundo sustain just, like, very good, uh, much better early game. Which, you know, you marked the tier early. I do think getting a tier... Oh, looks like we're getting another engage bottom. Morpheus flashes for the Q kill. Doesn't end up getting it, unfortunately. But it does look like we burn flash by Cho. And he does have to reset here, giving tempo in the bot lane. The bot lane tempo right now is really good. Like, they have this pressure and they're doing pretty well at maintaining it for now. The CS difference is big right now. It's... Uh, words are hard. Morpheus basically has double the CS of the Trograth right now. With first blood up. While we do have to look at the farm differently because this is a Senna lane, they are definitely doing their job in hindering the Senna from scaling. Yeah. <sighs> or at least hindering the Trograth from being any form of use. I don't think Cho's going to be relevant. I'm going to be honest. I think, yeah, like, I think it's Jinx really is going to hit Power him. Spike. Yeah, exactly. And then Jinx hits Power Spike way earlier than he does. Just because, like, you're just out CSing them, right? So... Yeah, you're out CSing, you're getting more kills, you're just getting more gold in general. And the thing with this team comp is, yes, they have tanks, they have frontline, but what, they're, what they were banking on was this Jinx not getting ahead. Because the one thing Jinx has been consistently known for is shredding through a frontline. Yeah, the damage from that champion is just huge. As Gopamine enters a great trade into this victor, and just goes to show you, like, even though meta is 100% relevant, not saying it isn't, but like putting a player on a champion that they're much more skilled on than meta, such as Gopamine on these like off meta picks, actually huge uh, for the side of uh, Elysium. So I do like seeing that. I think he's playing the matchup like very well. Equal in CS, doing a lot more damage. Like it's just really nice to see. Hopefully the Nico scales uh, as Gopamine itemizes, um, but we, I, you know, we'll just have to cross that bridge when we get there. The thing about like these off meta picks, and this is something I like to call it Aatrox Syndrome because that champion was so little played around the time it happened most prevalently. Uh, when a champion falls out of meta and they're just not picked all that often, like in this case Nico, I feel like people really forget how to handle and deal with that champion, and it really gives you like this invisible edge up on your enemy, you know, because they don't understand what this champion does. It's been so long, so there's oh. not as much respect. Yeah, I agree 100%, and it's actually, oh, looks like we're going on engage root onto the Seraphine as he heals, does back off there. Um, and we do see the side of Elysium doing Dragon. As bot lane gets a good tempo trade, it does look like literal monkey waters might take the cross map play, but honestly, if Grag checks this, I think mid and jungler just goes to check Herald, and they can actually stop this take, but um, first we gotta see if Grag actually face checks. Does look like he's about to spot them out. Good rotate on the side of Elysium as uh, the Herald actually ends up dying. Um, kind of an unfortunate that he didn't go check that earlier just to pull some pressure, but it does look like we're getting a fight bottom. And top! I mean, the action's going everywhere. Honestly, Morpheus kills the Cho'Gath. Gopamine gets double kill top lane. Does look like the Root's gonna land. Morpheus just waiting to get the vision on Senna. As a rocket comes out, Killiam gives passive outside of tower range. And a huge gold swing by the side of Elysium on that. That was map. four kills all across the map, and no one from Elysium died at all in either of those fights. The so Gragas certainly got close, but that is a really big lead that Elysium is getting. And now we just, they have this lead now, right? All these guys need to do is make sure they take the lead and, like, run with it. As long as they don't lose their tempo, this game could just already be done as long as they don't, again, lose the tempo, you know? Yeah, I think correctly itemizing against the tanks, very important early on. Can't uh, forget Grievous Wounds either, because this team will heal a lot. For the Mundo, yeah, and I guess Senna has heal and, like, the Cho passive. So I, I, I don't... 
I mean, I think that that's good, but I actually think the item spike of, like, cracking into LDR is actually yeah. going to net more benefit. They um, don't need the Grievous now, but it's definitely, like, a maybe fourth, fifth item we can talk about it, you know? Yeah, uh, I mean, you can get it also early on the Nico. Like, 800 yeah. gold Oblivion Orb is also good, but it does look like Mundo's going to die here to this tower dive, maybe. As Gragas ends up getting the kill, does look like DeAndre Jarman on this Udir might actually get a return as he does with the Phoenix Dance. MBLD just holding the wave, trying to get this farm before he gets collapsed on. Uh, I think he stayed way too long. Wait. <laughs> oh. <gasps> oh, and he missed the blast cone, oh, man. Goodness. Oh, my only my... problem, though, is MBLD just hit his entire wave, didn't kill it, and now his, like, his wave is now slow pushing into, uh, literal monkey water. So I actually yeah. think that's kind of a misplay farm-wise on the side of Elysium. Stop yeah, the there. wave management there wasn't really there. I would have just personally backed. There was no way that you get that wave underneath. Or you, there's no way you clear that entire wave in time. But Udir just gave it to him like gave the wave back so I, it I is mean, what it is honestly pretty neat i mean but he does get some plates to himself here with the air of Herald. yeah but it's it's Udyr. like two plates on udir like what's that gonna yeah. do for your team right like yeah like, don't get me don't, wrong the plate gold is good and that's cool but udir isn't their win con for this game yeah i think sharing the gold is much more important which is very hypocritical because many people on olympus would tell you when i was jungling Solo plates were literally my identity, um, and I would also probably do it on New Deer, but this guy's not my New Deer, you know what I'm saying? Listen, I've, I've seen Tony grief, uh, grief my ADC when I was on Olympus by dropping the Rift Tail that no one oh, can get Double the root by the side of Seraphine into an ultimate as Morpheus does hella damage, gets the passive, flashes, autos the turret, and then autos the Cho as the last turret hit actually hits him as he holds... A little extra time trying to auto things instead of just running out. I think that that flash was kind of unnecessary also, but you know, you get that get excited passive and you're just there to square, you know? Listen, he was feeling scrappy. He was feel he was feeling himself right there. He is currently five and one right now. Ninety two CS boy. also. Big boy. Big heckin' boy. I really want to see the Jinx Flame Horizon on the Cho'Gath. Like, I need to see it. I... If you can, Elysium, if you can hear me now, please, Flame Horizon, thank you. Neves has the simple, we want simple things from life. One of them is Flame Horizon. I really am so simple. I, w I went shopping today with a couple friends and I realized how boring of an attire I wear on the daily, so. But it does look like, uh, does look like Mundo and Houdier are now invading um, a little bit, clearing some of that vision, uh, trying to set up to maybe finish off this tower, get at least the next two plates, but um, we got the lane swaps coming in, Jinx. Should go mid here, but I think he's gonna grab red. He, I listen, he probably is because they're probably gonna look for another fight in mid. That fight bot lane though was absolutely like stellar. Like that perfect lineup of all the CC was absolutely beautiful. And now this Jinx is super ahead again. We're just about keeping momentum. Uh, however, I will say, uh, Chemtech Putrefire, very first item on the Seraphine, not a big fan. Not at all. If we're not, if we're going to get, oh, look like they're fighting top lane happening. Yeah. Well, I think the the future fire on Seraphine's actually just so smart, honestly. Uh, and as a non-support player, I literally like never think of that item, honestly. Yeah, uh, no, kept really future good, fire is super good on really Seraphine. Really good rush, very good rush for sure. Uh, I don't think I like it first item though. See, the reason why is we're so ahead. Our Jinx is already five in one. We're we're strong. These guys aren't healing worth shit. They they don't they don't out heal your damage right now. Realistically, we just get Arden Sensor for not getting Mythic first. We get Arden uh, Sensor, make Jinx go attack faster, or we get Mandate even. I so, actually I actually think Shirelia's here is the play just because like their front line has to run at you. And yeah, like, yeah. what are what are you gonna like? What are they gonna do when you Shrelia? It's like nothing, right? Does yeah. look like Morpheus might get caught here as the Q rupture comes down. Udyr just running, <laughs> and again, like okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The, 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 what's the good Kenta? Kenta. Kappa. Kappa. 
Yeah, no, I agree. The Australians would have definitely been better. I'm just an, an aggressive support player who thinks Mandate go burr. I like Mandate. I like having Mandate, but I just think against their comp, that is literally I'm no, gonna realistic run at you. Like... Oh, no, realistically against the comp, yeah, surely is definitely the play. Uh, but I'm a greedy support player who's been playing nothing but uh, solo keep my ADC who does a lot of damage. So Realis sure. Realistically, what should have happened is Gale Force you deer with Essence Reaver second item, go Tiger Stance, and you'll win every time, I promise. <laughs> oh my god. It's actually so good. Um, <laughs> that sounds hysterical to so, observe. Like, so much of the CS... Uh, you know, and like, it's no cut. I mean, it is kind of a little bit of a cut. I'm not trying to be like, you know, that guy, but so much of the CS missed by the cho- Oh, it looks like we're getting oh. another fight bot lane as the bear stun does connect Nico ulting to try and take Ooh. some of that damage as Victor flashes into the Nico ult with a TP coming down to save this play. Does look like they're going to go on the Victor as Nico misses the stun, but Gragas should be able to finish this off here. Nico somehow lives. I just yeah, an excellent timed ult, but it does look like Nico's snare is gonna be here as Mundo flashes over the snare, ults to run at him, but it does look like Udir's gonna make it out, but he doesn't with the MBLD flashy. As oh, what excellent oh kite by God. Gopi, honestly, and what a good response by Elysium, like always there to just help her brother out. Gopa means I was really expecting him to die away. He just casually walked into like the back into that fight. Like he was out and he went back in. I was like, that's it. He's gonna die. But surprise, surprise. Being a carry is just all about doing damage. It's literally the Seraphine all hits both of uh, Little Monkey Water's bot lane. And honestly, Morpheus Silent just absolutely crushing this game. They like they took their lead early and now they're just absolutely snowballing it. Like. And that was what I was expecting them to see, is like getting this lead, taking it, and just accelerating it. They ha they haven't quite lost their tempo yet. Like they, I, they... I don't go. think I don't think Elysium loses the tempo here. Like the, you know, they're they're so the side of literal monkey waters is just so far behind right now. I mean, you would have to get probably the Gragas and Jinx shut down on Senna to even like fathom, or maybe Victor, um, to even fathom like a decent comeback. Because as soon as, as soon as Harold or Baron spawns, you know you can just force Little Monkey Waters to that objective every time you want. Take the five v five and you just crush them, right? Yeah. So my thing about it is uh, the game's not over till we see the Nexus explode. You know, like there could always be misplays. There could always be a fight that they take that they shouldn't. Objective bounty is also still a thing in the game that could maybe help them propel themselves back into like some form of stability right now what monkeys needs to do is look for stability yo Faye, did you just call this team monkeys i mean wow that's the team name uh-huh uh-huh ape together strong bro let's go oh it does look like mundo's going on the nico as she does look like she's gonna get five man pinched here maybe not with gopa means excellent jukes let's go baby that's what I like to call mind games. I don't, but yeah, but like, why would he ever walk towards the enemy side of the, you know, place? I, I just feel games. like the decoy, I don't think the decoy is the play there, but it does look like a root's gonna come down. Choke getting chunked out as he flashes. Greg is ulti missing, hitting him to safety, unfortunately, as the side of Elysium is just looking to set up for this dragon play. And I think they just get it. It doesn't look like they're moving to contest them on this at all. They think they're just going to give it. Yeah, they just, I mean, honestly, realistically, at this point, they can't. Again, it's Air Drake. Like, it doesn't actually really matter. The objective bounty would be nice, but it's not crucial. Um, and, you, you know, going for the contest is just going to, you know, lose you more benefit than it's going to net you. So I think that's a smart give up by the side of Little Watermark. LWM. Can I get some DGZs in the chat, please? Thank you. Um. Where's the Where's the uh, Gopamine fan base when you need them? Yeah, Gasp honestly, up our boy Gopamine. Where is it, man? I'm sensing a distinct lack of fan base. Where's the simp army? Oh, I can't say that word on Twitch. I'm canceled. Cancel culture is coming for you, Ty. <laughs> Does look like the roots gonna go on Trundle here as. They're looking, but for what? I I don't know. It does look like Mundo has a flank here, but Trundle's just gonna walk the Jinx out. 
Jinx going for the damage as Udyr comes in. Flash over the wall by the side of Jinx. A good Seraphine ult. He catches Victor out of place. A root into a kill by the side of Gopamine on Udyr as he's just on the back line. Morpheus getting passive off of this Victor kill. And it does look like they're going to run down mid. Landing, this could be an hit for them there. Like, they don't have the Victor. They don't have the Udyr to really help them engage. Mundo has no ulti. They only have, like... Zena ult and Cho'Gath ult, but I don't think that's enough for them to use the, like, defend this tower. I think they just give. Jinx passives here. He's gonna, he's gonna take this path, he's gonna run down the Cho, I'm calling it. Never mind. He's Never a, mind. He's a, Disappointment. He's a weak mental player, Cap. <laughs> Your KDA player. <laughs> yeah. And he did go! Crack an LDR, so good itemization by the side of Elysium. Oh yeah, this is exactly what they need to do. Like, what front line? Their front line is non-existent now, especially because this Jinx is so strong and she's only going to get stronger. Now the question is, do you actually just ruin Udyr and Mundo's life and go rapid fire? Or do you go the Runans? I honestly forget uh, which one Jinx prefers, because I know there's definitely a preference on it and I feel shameful that I've forgotten considering Tree has lectured me on it several times. Pros build both. Um, when you need range advantage, you still build rapid fire, um, especially if it's not like a clump team. But unfor unfortunately, for the side of literal water monkeys, I mean, they are a clump team, right? Like, they don't really have that much range except the victor. And then Senna, like, post 80 souls, but like, clearly, I don't think that's happening. Yeah. I think right now, Elysium needs to just keep baiting the Baron fights or get Baron, and they need to just end the game, right? Yeah, like, um, honestly, they could just get Baron, run it down mid. In my personal opinion, they're strong enough to do it. I personally would not go down mid just because the inhib's down. No reason. You could like, probably go uh, bot then or top even. Yeah, I'd I would go top and try open top. Yeah, I would go top because that's like your most net resource of gold, right? Because you have three towers, um, which is going to supply your team with a lot of gold. Does look like Udyr is running in here. Does have the flash. Might see the flash uh, smite steal as their entire team is coming down. TP to try and prevent. Uh, them from getting on this backside of Baron, and it does look like they're just calling to finish the Baron. Flash coming in, and the objective has been stolen by Udyr. Unfortunate miss of Flash by Starbucks as he doesn't even cast it. And it does look like Morpheus is still on a killing spree. Gets excited, looks to hit the rocket as Victor is probably going down here. They actually lost the Baron there, which is a little surprising. Though three of them died for it, only their bot lane surviving, and Senna barely walking out of there. They're taking the path all the way to the bot lane to try and open up that lane next, especially seeing as they have minis in their base. They can't really stop them from trying to push in for this next inhibitor, though I don't quite know if they'll try to push that far, you know? I think they should be able to, honestly. Um, I mean, Victor did ult there, and the general team of Elysium just plays better without ultimates, right? Um, yeah. So I think you can still push here. Like, yeah, Baron minions, are, I mean, they're whatever, but it does look like Elysium's going to take the reset. It's just very unfortunate. Um, I mean, they're going to take the reset for the dragon, set that vision up. It's very unfortunate that there wasn't a smite cast by Starbucks. Um, but also, Udyr flashed into the pit at 1300 Baron HP. At that point, just stop DPS on Baron and just kill the Udyr, right? Like, he's not going to single-handedly do 400 damage. Yeah, I'm just, like, kind of looking at the state of the map right now. Because I feel as if Elysium just close out this game. It's 17-3. to 3. I feel as if we, at some point, just need to, like, death, just death ball down. Because what answer do they have for for Elysium just running it down as five down one of the lanes. I feel that they just can't respond to it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they have any way either. Especially, um, I think they should look for this Mundo pick. It doesn't look like they're going to as they prefer getting the Dragon Soul. But personally, I would actually leave the Dragon just in case there is some sort of comeback. Like Air Drake and Air Soul is not going to win you the game. Um, and just sitting on that Dragon being on the map uh, actually prevents Elder from ever existing, which, like, again, as you said, you know, the game is anyone's at any time. A lot of throws happen, a lot of objective bounties, and I think playing it safe and just leaving the air drakes better, but they do opt for the soul, so, you know, that conversation point is actually kind of mute. Um, yeah. but it does look like they're gonna, they're gonna pressure the ball lane here, so. I do agree that they should have left the Wind Drake because Elder is such a 
It is such an impactful objective. I think it's even more imp impactful than Baron Nasher is. Oh, for sure. I mean, Baron gives, like, honestly, like, very little stats. Like, the big thing is just, it is a pushing tool uh, to end the game. Um, but, like, Elysium is so far ahead, they can just deal with the, the minions as, you know, they're fighting. Um, whereas, like, Elder, you know, if they get a steal on Elder, if it goes to there, doesn't look like it's going to as Mundo gets caught out. Seraphine ulti hitting him and the Senna. Mundo goes down as Jinx gets the excited passive. Trundle Pillar coming out, excellent play by the side. Nico getting an excellent two-man ulti as Jinx is just popping off with this. Flashes forward to get the final kill, and it is a clean ace, or almost clean as our Gragas from the side of Elysium does die and Morpheus gets his quadra kill. Also report, uh, report Gragas for taking that, uh, picture, but, uh... No, it, no, Nico stole it. It was Nico. Oh, Gopamine, come on, man! Gopamine's grief and Morpheus! I mean, what's new, honestly? For real! That's why the fan base is out, is not out, man. They realize Gopamine's just the biggest troll in A. And they did it. The first game going to Elysium. That's what I'd call pretty poggers. Yeah. Who let me in here? Um, I don't know. I feel like using Twitch chat, like verbally, maybe not the play, but I do that every day. So <laughs> you're literally the like living embodiment of Twitch chat. I really am, actually. Uh, <laughs> I hit up this. Well, never mind, actually. Um. So here we go, guys. Check out this damage meter. We got 12, 1, and 5 Jinx. 17 minutes into the... Or, excuse me, 17k damage. Uh, 26 minutes into the game. Pretty good show out by the side of Morpheus LDN. Uh, Legion really packing a lot of punches in this bot lane. Doing some absolute work to get their bot lane ahead. Uh, and I, I think it was pretty clean victory overall. Um... I'm sure mo little monkey waters wish there was more of a ban loss. Uh, maybe that would have helped. But um, good job on the side of DZG. Woo! Nice game one. Well played by Elysium. Getting the momentum and never letting it up even for a second. There was no quarter for little water monkeys. Or Words are hard. The English language evades me. There was no team for that team. No room for the team to come back. English language sucks. Yeah, I think their solo lanes, though, realistically actually did, like, pretty good damage on the side of Little Monkey Waters. Um, you know, like, 13, 12k, pretty sure that's both their solo laners. I mean, that's good damage. Um, so I do think in this game, too, uh, to really bring this back, I would just like to see monkeys a little more organized. Um, and I think their draft needs to be a, a lot stronger. I mean, Udyr's not really that good right now. Uh, which is unfortunate because he's like one of my favorite champions. Um, I'll run at you, bear go burr. Uh, and then again, like the Mundo Cho Senna, like doesn't really facilitate Victor in any good game sense. So um, I, re I really think the draft just needs to be a little stronger next game by the side of monkeys. Yeah, because I feel as if there's too many tanks and I and um. Too many tanks and then a super late game carry. There was no one to anger them through early, you know? Yeah, it's the curse. Maybe Aiden was whispering in their ears, draft three scaling lanes, draft three skip. So, uh, yeah. But it does look like we're um, going to be getting into the lobby sooner, uh, hopefully, than later. Um, but this is Faye and Neeb's. Uh, signing out until the next draft. So we will see you guys soon.
Saturday, 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 joined again by Faye, it's me, Neebs, what is up everybody, we see the Ash Band coming in, again. Oh. Did you just uh, say, oh, my... did you just owe me? No, my, my draft isn't working, oh, now my draft is working, what the heck? Anyways, now my draft is working again. I'm not too sure about this Ash Band, like, it, it didn't work out last time. I feel well, like there's like more important bands, right? Yeah, they are blue side now, so I think like it's okay because they're. Tr I would assume they're trying to snag the Jinx. I could be I'm, wrong, but I'm always open to being wrong. But like even then, Jinx still has answers. I feel is that they like aren't Ash, and the last time they picked an ADC that Ash doesn't really like give too much trouble to in the late game, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think you just pick Aphelios or the Ziggs on the side of EZG and then literal Monkey Waters or Monkey Water or MKYW. I, I don't even know at this point. Um, I think that you just get rid of one of those two options if you're playing the Jinx, right? Yeah. Um, but it, I think Morpheus is actually, if they do end up picking the Jinx here, I'm calling it now, I think it's going to be a Morpheus Kalen. That would be my bet, but I could be wrong. We'll see. And it or does look like Bucks the Jinx fans coming through. 
Which is a good idea because setting Jinx is really problematic still in the meta. I know there's been yeah, like a lot of changes. Zary's but... open now, and this man, this AD carry on the side of Monkey Waters, has been spamming Zary when it is up in his solo queue game. So I actually okay. do think that is probably hit the stronger AD carry, and they yeah. do end up picking that. Yeah. But here's my thing: is like Zary takes a lot of work to execute and make her work well, and it's really easy to shut down that champion. Like. You have to play perfectly to make her work, and one small mistake can send you spiraling out of control. And if she falls behind, that champion just does not do anything, like, at all. So, I I know she's good in everything when played right, but I just don't think she is, like, the first pick, you know? Especially if there's a Seraphine <laughs> on the board. I, I'm not a big fan. I'm really curious to see what uh, the side of DZG is going to pair with the Seraphine pick. Uh, we just saw Silent Element slap on this uh, Enchanter support, so I can't wait to see him do it again. As DZG has seven seconds to pick their next pick. And I, I do think it should be A to carry here. Hopefully yeah. a Vagar. Give me the Vagar. I hope it's a Gragas Flux. I will say this, though. Uh, the Ash fan, though, makes a lot more sense since they're trying to get the Zeri. Ash is a very strong pick against Zeri. Yeah, I think... In my Zeri... opinion. No, I would agree. And I think the Seraphine on top of that, like, really locks her down. So I kind of like to see that. Um, I think the Graz Flex pick here is, like, pretty good also. Um, which we saw last week. Elysium actually did the same thing with Volibear, if I remember correctly. They played Volibear top one game. And then the next game, they picked it again, and then they flexed it. Um, so really good look on the side of Elysium. And their coach Zymphonic, a uh, very good way to facilitate your team with these early flex picks. Could even be a Seraphine mid. Honestly. Yeah, it could. Yeah, because I know uh, Gobamine plays Seraphine, and then we have Corky mid as well. So we have their mid and Balling already shown. Yeah, kind of weird, like a little bit of a yeah, weird... a little skeptical with the uh, Balling and mid draft because those are like your two big impact lanes, you know. Yeah, and I mean, now you can ban jungle if you want, uh, which, you know, like if he has a small pool, you can very easily pinch that where you just pinch top. Um, but it does look like DZG is going to pick up the victor to answer Corky here. I really like the victor with this, too. I don't know. I just think Victor is really, really good late game. And th as long as I pick something to anchor them through the early game, They'll be solid with it, you know? Yeah, a lot of people say that Zeri's early lane phase is really not that great. Honestly, the couple times I played her, I actually don't mind her. Um, like, her early game. Like, Q... But the Q and, like, auto-weaving... Like, your pushing power is actually really good. You know, you just E, get the Q to go through minions, hit it three times, and, you know, bada-boom, bada-bang, here is the win. You go fast. Go fast. I can't believe they put Sonic the Hedgehog in League of Legends. Yeah, well, I mean, Riot's <laughs> just really grasping at straws. <laughs> They're doing their best. Please look forward to another Cat Girl champion coming to your League of Legends soon. Uh, please no. A lot of emphasis on the on the you know destitution of our top lane here is Trundle and Poppy. Both potential tops, both potential junglers going on to the ban list. Kled and Mordekaiser being banned on the side of DZG. It should be their AD carry pick here on the side of DZG. So that Gragas unless, can stay a flex. Unless they pick uh, their jungle here now and then they just wait. Okay, now I'm hoping this is fasting Santa bot. I'm Wait. sure that it will be. I don't see why it wouldn't. I'm really sketched out though now because now we have the Victor Senna and that's two scaling carries. So that means you really need something from top lane to like, or top lane or the jungle to anchor you into the early game. Like they I mean, have not, to anchor through early and mid. Not necessarily just because Zeri and Corgi both scale, right? Like if you're yeah. matching, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if they pick a scaling... Top, top laner? Uh, is this gonna be a top? <laughs> is this it? 
<laughs> Anivia Pick the Dibbly. bird! Pick the bird! I want the glacial buff! <laughs> Do it. Lock it, Anivia. That's better tongue. be it. I'm literally I'm on the edge of it. my seat right now. <laughs> I'm living for it. Oh, uh, what a weakling. That's link. not a bird. Weak, weak mental state, honestly. Okay, yeah, I think you gotta pick a you gotta pick something that can deal with the set and you can anchor your top lane there. Uh I just I just need to get uh go get a picture of set now and then Photoshop Anivia over his face. This is the point where Olympus like if this was an Olympus draft, Olympus would be like, Okay, let me um mobify your set counters real quick. Hold on. Uh <laughs> oh, not really, not really. Maybe. I don't know, sometimes, sometimes I feel like Aiden might go to lolcounter.com and just be like, what should I pick here? Champion.gg. <laughs> no, 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 lolcounter. No, he goes to Mobifier and it's like, he only, he only uses guide. the Mobifier counters. He uses the Mobifier guide and he it's, it's not even like highest, it's like the highest reviewed one over the past week. So I do think we have Fasting Senna, Seraphine Support. We're going to see the Victor top, I think, okay? And I could be wrong. I really could. But I do think that the Volibear is going to go top. I'm always open to being wrong when it comes to guessing where the junglers and top laners are going. And Whose then camp is it anyways? As uh, Yeah, exactly. As far as monkey waters go, I mean, it's pretty obvious. You know, you got Set Corky in the bot lane. You got Braum in the jungle. You got Udyr mid. And you got Zeri top lane. You know, it's really... Really good draft by the side of Monkey Waters. It's pretty solid from them. Uh, words are hard. I'm sorry. I am really bad at talking, and someone should just take me <clears> on <throat> at this point. DZG, can I get a new co host? I'm just kidding. Anyway, so draft wise, who do you think wins, Faye? Uh, it honestly is really going to depend on how things pan out early, you know, because both of these teams scale. All of our carries in this game are going to end up scaling, and it's going to boil down to who gets that like that snowball lead earlier. Like if the Senna can, if the Senna and Seraphine get even one kill early, it's looking pretty, pretty glim already. It's all about who's going to get the early lead. I wouldn't be surprised if they literally just didn't even fight over the first two dragons. First three, even, just in the favor of scaling. I hope they won't give up the third. I think giving up the first two is fine, especially if you're going to cross-map Herald. Um, I think that's okay, but we shall see. Um, I wish these bans would come. Oh, they have to wait, that's why. Why is there not a no-ban in custom? Like, why is that not a thing? Right. Or, just, or you could just ban some, uh, some random champion. Ban Teemo. True. Get him out of here. I want that rat out of my game. But I'm assuming that it would probably ban, or it would mess up the stats. I think that's why you can't do that. But I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm just a goofy goober. Oh my god. I'm a goofy goober! Uh, okay, anyway. No, um, so wait, does... no continue. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't think so. Care. Twitch chat does not want me to serenade them. That is positively absolutely true. What if I grabbed my phone and played the Goofy Goober song from my uh, phone? I can't do it. It does look like Gragas microphone. is going top now, though. And <laughs> Volley, back to the jungle, man. These guys are throwing throw me through a loop, honestly. I don't know. I just, just put the bear in top lane against the set. I just... I just... I'm not a big fan of lane Gragas. I guess that's just a me thing, though. I like lane Gragas, but I think that in this scenario, Sed just kind of wins. Um, and again, like, this is your anchoring lane. My guess would be that Starbucks maybe doesn't play Gragas. Uh, and that's why he's not going. Or maybe it's a preferred pick by MBLD. I am unsure. But I do think, as far as trading purposes go... And, and like, fighting-wise, I think the volley into Sed is the better matchup. Gragas isn't gonna like clear as quick as a new deer because Phoenix power clearing is just so strong. But you know, Gragas is very good at counter ganking um, and really just like disruption for gank, so that's good. Victor Corky, as you said, just gonna kind of depend on who gets what and when. Bot lane has an incredible amount of sustain, 
Um, Seraphine Senna, that's a lot of healing capability. That's a lot of range into another melee support. Um, and I don't think that if, uh, you know, the side of Elysium gets Monkey Waters under tower in the bot lane, I just don't think Monkey Waters stands a chance. And I think the showing last game really showed, like, Elysium's bot lane knows what they're doing, what they want to achieve into this ranged melee matchup, and the poke is just going to be insane. Not only that, but it also how well they were able to keep up again. Like, I mentioned a lot about, like, the tempo, and I think that's, like, a really important thing to be able to maintain throughout the game like once you get that lead and you have that momentum it's all about not losing it and they did very good at taking it and turning it into a snowball they took yeah. an inch and made it a mile oh i i mean i wish i could do that <laughs> but anyway uh. um <laughs> so we're about four seconds into the loadout spectator delay uh, just again, real quick, guys, exclamation point, B-U-F-F, -F, Twitch chat, follow the link, get your rewards. Our sponsors will not kiss you, but I might. So, we'll see you guys <laughs> after the break. It's Neebs, it's Faye, it's DZG. Let's go, baby.
Welcome back, everybody. It is I, Neebs. Currently, Faye, I believe, is making coffee still. I am also making coffee, but I've got a Bluetooth headset, and I'm cooler than she is. So that is why I'm here, and she's not. Um, but it does look like we're uh, seeing DZG Elysium and Little Monkey Waters doing this five point again, as it does not look like we're going to see any early game action, unfortunately. Party people, I return seemingly almost just in time with my caffeine. Did you get to hear me call you not as cool as I did? I need to know. Uh, no, however, honestly, yeah, that's kind of true. I'm kind of lame. I mean, I am cooler than ice cubes, but I don't freeze. I mean, the other night at work, I tried to crawl into a box in my work, and now they keep calling me a cryptid. So that's neat. Okay. Dang. <laughs> Yeah, how do you feel about how do you feel about keystones on everybody? Uh, first strike. Mm, I'm not too sure if I'm the biggest fan of the first strike into the quirky lane. For the on Morpheus right now in the bot lane, it's pretty good since we have the brawn that we can abuse for it. I can't really comment about the top and junglers just because I don't know those champions very well nor those matchups, so I don't really have a comment for those. Uh, Guardian of the Seraphine, big a fan of that, since I think it's a safer option, though I wouldn't have been completely opposed if we did another airy game. I'm kind of confused about the First Strike Senna. Like, I understand its premise, right? Um, since you're into a melee champion, like, you can definitely, like, proc it, but... I'm gonna be real with you, Chief. I think Fleet is just way better. If you take Fleet into this lane... Uh, with the Seraphine, like, the stain is actually just insane. Um, and you don't really have to worry about that as much. Yeah, especially with the poke lane. I mean, I can totally see why. Like, they don't really have the poke to really stop Senna, unless Senna, you know, stands right there to get Braum queued. But it's only, like, the one skill shot we have to worry about, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I just... It's just kind of an odd feeling. And as I said... Like prior, I think, um, I think Honestly? that the Gragas, like, said matchup is just very set favored, especially very early, so. I just want to rescind my earlier comment, though, on the Guardian Seraphine, because it, it's, uh, it's farming Seraphine. We probably should just double down on the AP and gone, uh, Aerie anyways. We could have even more aggressive if we were planning to be more aggressive in this lane, which realistically or probably not, we could have gone Electrocute, too. Uh, which lane? Sorry, the Victor the lane. The the Seraphine lane. You can I've... you can go electrocute on Seraphine, uh, but that's only if you're in like a super aggressive lane. I literally just missed that entire fight, but it like happened. I really yeah. am sorry. I didn't play by play that, but I was eating a tortilla chip and I was too fixated on the conversation. So I apologize for that, everyone in the stream. But I will give you guys the ru the salty run back. Are you ready? Uh, Greg do damage, volley stun. Set flash, grab, kill. Easy. All right. There you guys easy, go. There's, easy, your, there's your play easy. by play. Why can't you do all the play by pays like that? The play by pays? I'm getting paid for this? Let's go, baby. Wait, every paid? time I talked about a fight, I made like 50 cents. Alyssa, can we make that happen? Thanks. I'll give you one penny every time you talk about a fight. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get rich by royalties. Here comes Udir, though, as he looks for a play on the bot side. Does look like he might play, make a flash play, but kind of just eating his time away here on the side of Elysium. So good play, not pushing up. He does show, I don't know about any of that, as the double root does, uh, you know, lock down both of these uh, bot laners. Oh, that's a flash from Braum, a flash from Udir, and a flash from Setos. That's a two for one deal right there. It really is. Oprah's just giving out <laughs> flashes for free here. Really. And you get a flash, and you get a flash. Don't. I just don't understand the. I don't know. I just. I'm gonna let it be. It doesn't matter. I. I don't know. The Udi just keeps flashing for these like super like eager plays when like these guys aren't in position for it. You know. Because like, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Does a lot, and they're getting good trades off bottom. Like, you really just need, as I said, like, the pushing power of Zeri is actually, like, very good early, especially into this, uh, Seraphine Senna lane. So, like, really, you just, oh, looks like we Ooh. might get a heal off the side of Elysium, as Morpheus just bites off more than he can chew, really. And Udyr, 
Looking top side. I don't know why you stopped to clear that ward, but it does look like Gragas is just gonna get out. I don't know, this jungler just keeps making some questionable decisions. Like, every time, like, from the bot lane play that we saw between this game and last, and like, pausing on the ward instead of just running at the Gragas, who he, he caught the Gragas. He could have at least caught the Gragas if he just didn't stop, I think. Yeah, you can also just long haul around and wrap around to try. Um, since Grag was like already pushed. Yeah. Uh, but it does look like Gudir's gonna go for a return gank here. I mean, obviously I'm a DGZ fan, but hopefully, uh, you know, our Gragas gets out of it and he probably end up, ends up yeah, does like, fine. he just like, and that's the thing about top lane Gragas. You know, once you get that tier, like you're unkillable, really. Like, you know, the mana costs, your, your healing, the W damage reduction. It's just an overall, like, I'm going to live pick. So that, I think that that's a good recognizer by the side of Elysium. Greg just absorbs pressure, gets some of these ganks from the Udyr, and then he just makes the plays. Yeah, and uh, this Udyr isn't really picking, like, what side he'd want to play off of. Personally, if I were this Gragas, I'd try me playing for the top mid side of the map. And that's just so we can get the early Rift Herald objectives, try and get the set stronger, so that way we do have our anchor throughout the early game able to get online quicker and help out putting pressure across the map. Yeah, Faye, I really hope that Greg is going to play topside. I mean, oh, did I, say I, don't Greg know else, or I don't know where else he's going to go, Faye. Wait, did I say Greg is or Udyr? I forget what I'm saying. You said Greg. I did? I thought he said Udyr. Nope. Had but empty, no okay. thoughts. The Head lights empty. are on, but no, but no one's home. Pillar only, dude. Head empty, <laughs> pillar only. It's not even. I've been playing a lot of Renata. It's head empty, only, Ew. only Chemtech. Dude, she's so much fun. She looks like cancer, and I hate everything about her. She's, she's not, she's not that bad, honestly. Uh, she has a lot of nuance, and as far as things go, I think she's just like an almost watered down Lulu. Her ult doesn't feel super impactful in lane, but that's neither here nor in this game. Yeah, see, here's the thing about Zeri, which is a relevant champion, and this is going to come full circle. Stream, don't worry about it, okay? Um, but Zeri is actually just the better version of Sivir. Prove me wrong. Honest? Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like, Zeri Sivir does everything Sivir does, but better. Sivir and Jinx had a baby, and it was Zeri. Okay, um... I mean... Okay, so, uh, back to the stream. Let's go, baby. <laughs> uh... Well, no, because even, like, a couple of the skills from uh, Zeri's kick kind of remind me of Jinx. It's mostly with her, uh... I think it's her W that functions kind of like Jinx up. Yeah, I mean, they basically are the exact same ability on the same button, so... But don't yeah. look like there's there's quite a bit of trading here in the mid lane. As Gopamine just relentlessly hitting this Corgi for every time he hits him, which is excellent. Good play. Um... And it does look like MBLD with the with these uh, crystals uh, just amplifying his grass proc is actually starting to win some of these trades off side. I wasn't really expecting this Greg is to do so well into the set. Like, I don't really know a whole lot about the uh, the top uh, Gragas top to really made any like solid read. I thought it wasn't like all that good, but MLB MBLD is making this look good. Yeah, it's just really good at surviving. You know, he just, and that was a really good Gragas toss. As Set uses ultimate, good flash uh, E by the side of MDLD. As Gragas is going to try and, or not Gragas, Udyr is going to try and run him down, but he kites him out. Might get the kill here, return, but it doesn't look like it. As Udyr's turtle stance saves his life. That was a really clean play from him. Like, I'll be really honest. He's doing really well with this, um, this Gragas top, like, between this game and last. That was a really good, uh, and it does look like LX Starbucks is just gonna get the stun. It cancels the auto attack and ends up probably not getting the kill here on the Udyr now. Ooh, and then Another a engage by the side of Braum as ultimate hits down. Ignite on the Senna, but Senna gets out clean as can be. Squeaky, some might actually say. That's the ulti and the Ignite down from Braum. Senna ulted as well, uh, Presumably looking for an assist from top lane off the gra off the uh, volley bear. And it looks like they're getting the Rift Herald too on the map if you look there. The Victor and Volley Bear getting that. And we we want to see that because again, it's all about generating like that early pressure. 
Getting these early objectives, especially on contested like this, is always a big deal because we see Udyr in the bot lane, so this Rift Herald is free. Yeah, it's really interesting actually because like Udyr set uh, topside have much more kill priority, I think. Um, you know, and and package w should be up. Uh, so kind of a weird play by the side of little monkey waters. I can't. It doesn't look like Corky picked up package. I weird. I don't know. It does look like we're seeing another engaged top as Seth's just getting clean swept by the CC as Volibear and Gragas are doing work on this top side. Should get two plates and then drop Herald for four plates accumulative. Just skyrocketing. But it does look like Braum goes in for an engaged flashing over the abilities and Seraphine gets out alive. Another hail crash and it does kind of look like they're going to take this top tower here just opening the map a little sooner. Yep, Udyr was... I don't think Udyr was where he needed to be. I'll be real honest with you. I know his bottom camps are up, but Rift Herald objective was up, and especially after, um, especially after dying there or like being pushed off, I would I would suspect that we'd be doing the Rift, or they might be looking at it. You know? Yeah, it does look like Seth's gonna try and stop this Herald, but it looks like Gragas and Volibear just dealing some incredible damage. MBLD holding down the turret aggro, but it does look like they're just gonna walk out here as Corky transfers or starts moving over. But a fight bot side as Brom passive is on the Seraphine, who's oom at the moment. But Morpheus is about to get stunned, takes too much damage. Zeri flash, or actually healing, excuse me, and then moving forward with the E buff. And it does look like a double kill for the side of Little Monkey Waters on that Zeri. That was a very unfortunate occurrence, seeing as Brum uh, walled the Seraphine ulti and all of their damage. Really, really awkward situation. And now the Zeri is pretty strong, so that could be a big problem for DZG Elysium. Yeah, really good recognized by the side of uh, Little Monkey Waters, though, where like I'm lo gonna lose another top tower, maybe, so I might as well just clear some of my bot side, but still contest for some of these plates. Now, I do think it's an overstay. So here's the thing, Zeri has not bought items. If they can stop her back right now and just lane trap her, um would be pretty big if they don't do that though which again if i was senna right now i would just be alting the bushes to make sure that they can't back um and lane locking her um but it does look like morpheus is just going to clear the vision here they're going to push the wave should actually be able to get two plates off here if played correctly and we see a little bit more actions happening in the top lane once again look at him go such a noodle fight that like <laughs> it's actually crazy but like Gragas is still just doing damage as he does hit the what an excellent play honestly honestly like, <laughs> that looked like a bit of a wet noodle fight to start not gonna lie just the like and i'm wrong like and i'm glad to be wrong just putting in mbld on this Gragas, definitely the play doesn't look like a fight's about to break out. Volley stuns the Udyr as W comes down from the Senna. Ultimate coming in to clutch a kill as well as some shielding on Volley Bear. From Wing out, but it does look like the Victor Laser is going to hit this. Corky packages in. Gopamine flashes over the Ultimate, but does get hit by the slow. Dies to the W by Zeri, and it does look like they're going to get Dragon, but at the cost of their mid laner. Kind of a weird flash by Gopamine though, he walked out of the ultimate and then flashed back into it. Just a bit, but I mean, they got they got the dragon. Yeah, I mean, it, good, good, definitely good play overall, for sure. Uh, we have, well the lane sets are happening now, we have a lot of pressure on the top side of the map. I want to see them start to open up the mid lane, and I kind of want to see how they're going to handle the Zeri, who is getting very ahead, and the only one of like a really notable lead right now on the side of Elysium is the Gragas, who is their frontline tank. So I'm hoping to see something happen to kind of give some power to their Senna or their Victor. Yeah, I mean, as long as Senna keeps getting souls, though, which I'm, I'm not sure if we can get a peek at how many souls she has. Um, but she it has does look like she's at 43, souls. yeah. Once she hits 80, like, I think Zeri just loses, right? Yeah, at some point, Senna just becomes such a, uh, such a problem. I almost said a bad word. At some point, Senna just gonna be 
a big problem for that enemy. Oh, flash by the Udir as he goes into Morpheus. Morpheus just W and flashing out. Does look like they might get a trade kill on the Zarya. She gets exhausted. Does get hit by the Seraphine ulti. Volibear running in, trying to look for this play. It might ultimate the tower, but doesn't look like they're gonna keep going. They certainly spook the the uh, the Zeri and the Sun of there. That was a really good flash from uh from DeAndre? The Udir. We're just gonna go by champion. That was a really good flash from the Udir onto the Sun of there. We gotta make sure we're uh, establishing vision though, to make sure stuff like that doesn't happen. Yeah, I did try by the victor though on bot side, just getting oh, that yeah. free poke on uh, Forky and then forcing him under the tower as the lane just keeps pushing. We might actually see Gopamine just drop ultimate here and kill him, but... I I think we need like one more ability on, of poke before we can like drop just drop the ulti and kill. But I don't know if Gopamine is going to stay around for that. I don't know if Corky's is going to stick around for that to happen. I think Govamine mean, just playing it smart because they don't actually have any vision. He's not sure if he's going to get collapsed on after trading onto the Corgi. But Corgi does end up taking a very far walk back and reset. So pretty good. But it does look like the side of Elysium is looking to make and set up this Herald play. As we just saw, Zara gets caught out. Very easy to kill. So big net win if they can get that. See a little bit more power coming out because we just have myth. Everyone looks like has their mythics except the Corky who really doesn't get their mythic first item. I, it looks like Bruno hasn't either. That's only two people in this game who don't have their mythic items yet. But that just means we're starting to kind of progress and to get hopefully seeing some power spikes coming up from the Victor and Senna soon. Looks like the set's caught out again. Does ultimate the Gragas to get out, but doesn't have anywhere to go. He does flash. Volibear ultimate coming down, disabling the turret. Does look like the shield's gonna keep him alive for a little bit longer, but aggro starts hitting. TP coming in from the Corky. Braum ulti missing. Does look like Gragas is actually gonna go down here as the Braum stun actually ends up there. Shut down going to Corky. A little bit of an overzealous play, and I think they overcommitted for the, uh... The set, who's already like 0 and 5, I don't know if I would have wanted to commit that much to him. Especially considering their their vision on the map isn't super like good right now. So we don't really know who's where. It was definitely yeah. a little bit overzealous. I, I don't think the dive there is worth it at all. I think, you, you know, you just keep... Like, you got the flash, you got the ultimate. You can set up like a 5v5 and like, uh, like really just facilitate the fact that Set doesn't have ultimate. Also, as you said, he's 05. Like, he's not really worth that much. Uh, he's not really doing it. He, like, he's a non fact in the game. If we're gonna do. If we're gonna overcommit like that and commit for someone like that much, I think it should be the Zeri. Like, she has a 200 gold shutdown and we want to try and give that to someone. Preferably. Yeah. I think preferably we want to see it go to the, uh,. Probably the victor, I would I would say right now, because Senna still needs to gather gather her soul before she's super online. Yeah, I think another item though on this uh, Senna would actually be huge. Um, That's so also actually, really fair. Yeah, it's I'd actually just like to see it. I, I I think I think you're right. I mean, it really doesn't matter as long as it's on a carry. That's what yeah, it's good. as long as it's on the Senna or the victor, because Seraphine doesn't really need a whole lot. I'm hoping I see the Riley second from the Seraphim because they're going to need it to help peel back the team. Yeah, it does look like Corgi has package. I don't know if Elysium actually ends up contesting this, but uh, I don't believe they will as Victor is TPing top? No, he's TPing mid, okay. Set TPing top side though as MBLD just gets this tower for free. Mid lane gets tower for free. Corgi still just... I, I, he just, I don't know. A little know. bit of an over-eager. I don't know where he, yeah, I mean, I think they're just using that as a zone tool as this Gragas tries to 1v1 set, almost dying in the process as Herald's drop, gets two towers mid lane for that Earth Drake. Pretty good play. Braum flash into the ultimate. Victor caught out, flashes afterwards. Victor stun goes down, doesn't actually hit anybody, but Volibear ults in, starts working on this Corky as Corky flashes out. Seraphine doing some absolute damage. Flows on Udyr and they're just chasing them down as Zeri tries to do some rebuttal damage, but Gale Forces and Ease forward doesn't end up getting the victor kill though, as the clutch heal by Morpheus doing some work. That was that was a.
pretty good, honestly. It felt a little sloppy. Uh, I personally wouldn't have used a Seraphine ult earlier as a zoning tool. I would have held it for them to try and engage on them because what this team wants is to engage on... They want to engage on Elysium and their big advantage is their counter engage with the Seraphine ulti and the Gragas ultis, you know? So I personally don't want to use it as a zoning tool right there. I want to use it to... I want to use it to answer and engage. And I think if they had it there, that they would have clean sweep uh, monkeys there. Yeah, I, th I think that was that was good. Again, though, after they use the Seraphine ulti and they get both towers, I think they just walk away. I think actually staying for the fight is overzealous. Yeah, um, I could agree to that. So I think either way works. I just think you'd have to be concise on what play you're, you're actually making. Um, but, I mean, 5 to 8, we've got a 5k gold advantage on the side of Elysium. Um, it does look like the... the CS differential is like pretty even on both sides, so a lot of that gold just coming from objectives, towers, uh, and a couple early kills. So, man. All right, a yawn. Everything That's... on the board is like looking pretty even right now. Again, like what's really causing this gold lead is like all the objectives. Monkeys have yet to get a single tower from Elysium right now. Well, tower plates and then the first strike. I bet that's making some money, you know? Oh, yeah. Can we get a first strike check from either the Victor or the Senna? I mean, two of them have it. I mean, uh, here's the thing. We saw a trade with the Senna having first strike on Braum, and it only gave Senna 19 gold earlier. Yeah, I but really now... Don't, I really don't like that pick. Like, I just don't like that key stick. I like it, but I don't. I only like it on certain champions. Like I, I think it's really good on Ezreal. Oh, looks like a flash stun. It goes on Seraphine as the exhaust walks out, but the root comes down and Udyr is trapped. Gets clapped. Seraphine ulti coming down to hit the Braum ulti. Braum ult's late. Still gets the charm, but does look like Elysium's gonna back off after that fight. No, it was his wall. What's that? Sorry. It wasn't the Braum ulti. It was the wall. Oh yeah, yeah. The yeah. Yeah, that Though, should that be is a good now. <laughs> Wind wall abilities, Lamau. Except I don't mind uh, the Braum wind wall. It looks like now that uh, they took on the jungler, they're they're setting their eyes on this dragon. Or not this dragon, the Baron. I don't know if they'll kill it quickly enough, though. Yeah, uh, Udyr is going to be back here in time, but I do think it's kind of like a switch and bait. Like, this is that very comes skeptical. out and absolutely claps Morpheus. Does look like Volley Bear's on the back line, goes onto the Corky, gets the kill, but at what cost? Azari's just clapping some damage. Good for me and ends up getting set, but can't actually get away from this front line on the side. The bear, Zeri goes in, gets the kill on Victor, and she's just popping off right now as she gets a clean kill on the back line. Nobody is focusing this there, you know? Like, she's just getting free reign right now, and nobody's, like, jumping on her. Nobody's looking for her. We don't have our CC tools for her when we need to have them. Like, she's a genuine problem right now for Elysium, and they're just not trying to lock her down. That's what they need to be doing. A little bit of a poor positioning there also. Like, Morpheus got hit by the set ulti Gragas combo, um, and then that on top of the fact that, like, Corky Rocket just ended up hitting uh, Gragas as he came down actually just clapped Morpheus. Yeah, uh, I mean, even still, I'm concerned because the pattern is that Zeri's getting a lot of, uh, she's getting a lot of uh, room, which we don't want her to have. Yeah, and does look like Corky Patches going on the back line as Morpheus gets hit by it, does actually oh. just get out damaged here. As Starbucks is also following big shutdown on the Zeri, the Jinx or the Victor combo combined with Seraphine ulti is very good, but it does look like Elysium's just getting out damage on. Actually, not! It looks like the turnaround has a huge Seraphine damage actually ends up doing work, as it does look like they got the Zeri shut down, and now Corky is just gonna, gonna back. That was huge, that was a big swing. swing. An incredible ultimate uh, combo between the Victor and, on, and uh, Seraphine. Silent and Gopamine really just powerhousing on their picks right now. And the thing here is like, the, mis the monkey has made the mistake by trying to fight this team in a corridor with a Seraphine and a Victor. 
Though, uh, I'm hoping something here can happen for Morpheus because they're having a really hard time right now. Yeah, that's the second time that, uh, they have got, like, Morpheus has just got completely obliterated by an ultimate. Uh, and, or, I mean, just, like, damage, right? Like, Corky packaged onto him, and he's dead. Um, which is really unfortunate, but no package timer, uh, or the package timer is, like, probably a little bit off now, hopefully, um, for the side of Elysium, but we'll see. I'll watch for the quirky package and then just making sure we ha we have some form of seat lockdown for that Zeri because I think if we can if we can do that it's GG like sets a non-factor Brom doesn't really do any damage Udyr's building full tank it's all yeah. just about killing the carries I gotta talk to this Udyr after the game I gotta get him on the Gale Force tech man I'm telling you it, is this it doesn't look like Gopamine gets an incredible one fourth HP trade. <laughs> I thought that was gonna go way better. Honestly, I, really I, was, I, I, I was expecting a little bit more excitement there too. Yeah. I was yeah. gonna, I was just gonna lose my mind there, but I'll save it for the next combo. Gopamine, please don't prove me wrong, baby. Mwah. Gopamine always provides. Ooh. Odd ten. Oh, okay. <laughs> Get your head in the game, memes. I'm ready, man. I'm here. The good old League of Legos on the rift. Lagging Legos. League of Legends edition. Where? Where's the next play, Faye? What do you think? You think Elysium tries to force Baron again? I'd like to not force Baron again. I mean... You could try and bait it and then like hide in a bush for the to funnel through a choke and then just Seraphine Victor ulti again because like right now what they really want to do is try and get fights in the jungle because I feel that that's where they excel is in like these these like close quarter spaces where there's not a lot of room for them to run away from a Victor ulti or a Seraphine ulti, you know? Yeah, that's what I like to see by the way. LB, uh, LX Starbucks just grabbing that red buff. At yeah. uh, 27 minutes in. That's the jungling I look forward to every time. And most people would say I'm being, like, sarcastic. I'm absolutely not. Anyone that will that has ever seen me jungle knows I still take buffs the whole game. That's the only way. And I'm glad that Starbucks is under that uh, tutelage. Are you sure? Because he's losing his blue buff. <laughs> I sold yeah. my coffee rock. Oh, shit. Oh, I forgot about my coffee! Are you leaving me to go get your coffee too? Are I'm we still coffee here. buds? Oh. I I actually have um I have a dismounting uh desktop screen. It kind of works the same way that a switch does. Like I can actually take my my desktop uh screen like and uh, remove it from the docking, and then I can carry it around my house. It's actually pretty neat. That sounds really neat. What the heck? I want one. <laughs> too too bad. Sad. I, honestly, like the one three one right now is kind of fine. I'm just uh, I want to see some action. We're kind of getting into a little bit of a lull, but this is kind of just what happens when we pick scaling comps, you know? It yeah. Kind of like hit these like little moments where like there's not like a whole lot going on. Or in lane phase part two. Really are, um, which I think the scaling is fine for Senna. Can we get a soul check? Should be pretty close to popping off. Yeah, we should be close to 80. We're at 83. Okay, oh, it's time. Yeah. It's 17 Senna more souls hours. and Senna's OP, bro. Senna gaming hour soon. And I really like that about Senna. Like once you get like that amount of souls, Champion, she just goes from really being a minion to becoming a champion, and a yeah, really I, good one at that. I actually prefer the rapid fire over the Ginsu's though, because I think the added range, especially if you do end up getting red buff, is just huge. Um, for like chase down, but with their front line, I can see why going Kraken Ginsu's is probably like the preferred build for Morpheus here. Um, um, I would have liked to see the Riley sooner from the Seraphine. Oh wow, that is a lot of Corky damage. Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing about like this comp, like they want to scale. Elysium wants to scale, but they also really need to end this game. Like Corky is like gonna get very strong soon. Doesn't even have that Ludens yet. 
They're just, uh, are they just letting them take the Baron? I don't know if letting them is the correct terminology, but yes. <laughs> I mean, they trade it. I, I, corky package. Yeah, this is where Elise needs to fight. Like, yeah, they need to fight. They need to fight, like, right now. And Udyr is, like, still doing this dragon. Like, they're just like, yo, let me at him. But it does look like a good uh, W coming down. Okay. Udyr's on the back line. A huge damage with that Phoenix stance. Oh, man. Uh... MBLD doing his best, but it looks like... Starbucks is just running back after killing the back line and the stun coming out onto the Gragas yet again. Okay, so they gave, I think in this scenario, I, I think you just let Udyr finish the dragon. You fight the 4v5 while you split it. Like, yeah, Starbucks think... did some big work there on the back line. So I much big work. Does... No, you go. I'm sorry. Oh no, I'm I'm waiting to see if something comes in as the Senna ultimate does give him the shield, allowing Starbucks to live. But he might do this chase down. Doesn't look so as he clears the mid wave and then looks to go into his jungle. So like, here's the thing right now is them getting that second dragon right now isn't a big deal. It's fine if we delay the elder. If anything, it's preferable because elder is gonna be like what ends the game, you know. So yeah, Elder is quirky is uh, no go. Yeah, so like, here's my thing. I think we give the Mountain Drake there and we just run it down mid. And we take the 4v5 in mid lane they come. Yeah, I would agree. While Udyr is distracted, definitely fight the 4v5. And also, they're kind of out of position as Baron buff would have, like, really netted them a lot of pushing power. But it does look like Braum's looking for the ult. Uh, Stena very low. As Starbucks also taking damage. Seraphine ult comes out. Victor ult comes down. Damage is just really piling on this side of uh, Elysium as they're just getting hit by, like, Corky Rockets. Silent needs to be more patient with these Seraphine ultis. Like, they're, they're looking for the group, and that's really good. But we need to wait on that Braum ulti. Or that Braum wall. Even now I'm calling it the ulti. But that Braum wall is such, like, a big deal for Seraphine. It does look like another fight comes in. It sets knocked into the back of the team, does go down as frontline from the Elysium. It's just actually tanking a hell of a lot of damage, but it does look like Corky's just getting the free fire as Starbucks and NBLD are just trying to hold this fight. Man, there is just so much damage on this side of literal water monkeys. Yeah, it's that uh, Corky. Corky does just so much damage, and he's starting to get online now, which is a really big problem for them. Yeah, it doesn't even have the Ludens uh, buff yet, so that when that, like, falls, it's gonna do an absolute metric ton of damage. I'm almost expecting him to go uh, Crown and just become unkillable. Though he kind of already is, like, they just can't get to him, I suppose. Yeah, they don't really have the range or the function to get onto him, so I think that they're pro he's probably okay. Yeah, and Morpheus seems to be struggling to really, like, function in this team. Like, I can't really feel the impact from the center right now, you know? Yeah, I think... I don't... I don't know. It's, it's, just hard, it's to... hard to be center right now. It's really hard to be the center. I think the spacing needs to be a little different, but Set being able to just like get on the back line and bring the bring the frontliners even farther back like really disrupts the team fight and what they they need to be having happen. You know, you lose you know part of your frontline wall, and like those Corky rockets are just hitting your back line, um, and that's like a lot of damage. Uh, you know that Elysium just is not capable of dealing with right now. I think they really need to set up a pick and, like, get one, which is what they're looking for. Um, so hopefully we'll see something advantageous come from this. We're looking... Looks like we're looking for a little bit of a, a pick here. Will they get it? Is the question. I would... I kind of want the Seraphine to be a little bit more forward. Does look like the W's gonna come down. Set flashes out. Santa ulti comes down. Gragas barrel. 
Actually disrupts. I think you want to throw that Gragas Barrel earlier. You know, sets out of position, knock him back even further. So if he does flash, he's just like nowhere nearby anymore. See, we want the Seraphine a little bit more forward there in that push with the other three because then we could have had a flash Seraphine if he wants the Braum while expired. Those look like sets getting the TP, so Elysium does get that uh, summoner spell out as this dragon is just respawning. And uh, it does look like we still have the Seraphine ult available, Victor ult still available, Volibear ult still available, and Greg Salt almost coming back up as the side of Elysium is just trying to slow play this, but Corky Package is up and is available. Seraphine. Getting caught, does the ultimate as Corky's passive just kind of disrupts the entire team fight. Volibear on the back line, but just can't deal with anything as Udyr kind of stops him. MBLD trying to chase down this Corky, gets the kill, but Zeri just coming out. Gopamine sitting at 300 HP and the side of Elysium just getting rocked once again by this Corky package. They, what, Elysium has to fight without Corky package up. They're like just, they just not have to force taking it. the right opportunities. Like they're not forcing when they need to force, and that's like the big thing. Like there's several issues right now with Elysium that they're just not fixing. The two big ones are one, it's either it's either we're fighting Corky when he has package, or when we're fighting Corky when he doesn't have package, we're not looking at the Zeri who's now a problem. Like just literally in the center of the team, we're just not getting hit at all, you know? Like those are like the two problems and it's always one or the other. Yeah, I think a big misplay on the side of Elysium is not hard committing for that set play. Really would have done work if that uh, champion was not in the team fight. Um, you know, to disrupt your front line as well as, you know, takes away a body, which is like very important. I think if you're trying to get these picks, if you're trying to get these fights, you need to commit. Like, you just have to. And, and, and then play around the fact that, you know, the champion is down and does not offer the utility that it does. Um, and, and as you said, I mean, this Corky Zeri are just huge right now. Um, and, and there's not really a big answer. Seraphine doesn't really offer as much AoE damage as those two champions. And, you know, Senna realistically is just kind of like a, you know, single target damage dealer. Where Victor, like, yes, has the AoE capabilities, but it's not nearly as strong as this Corky Zeri combo. Say it, and I don't like the Seraphine build. I don't like the demonic. I don't like. Uh, I, I just don't like the demonic. I don't think we need the damage from the Seraphine. Oh, Phoenix. big Seraphine ulti as he gets three people. Not really who you want, but does look like the damage is coming down. Big Sen ulti to shield, and the Zeri absolutely has to die here. Does get shut down by the Senna, as that's an excellent pick. Two dead on the side of little water monkeys, as it does look like Elysium is just going to hard shove mid and maybe end the game here. With Zeri and Braum down, they definitely could look to try and close out this game. All they need is a wave, and they could they could try and look for something on that Corky. All they need to do is just kill the Corky. That's all they have to do right now. Yeah, and they do have the sustainability. Drag Assault soon. Set Disruption's pretty big here as Set just gets clobbered by the Senna damage. Drag is still chasing Corky down. Udyr running back in. Stunned by the Gragas, and it does look like the fight's gonna happen. Knockback, the Corky's about to fall, and it does look like Elysium's gonna try and end the game with an oncoming wave. Inhib is down, th 12 seconds on the Zeri, but they ping to the mid wave. I do believe they're gonna try and end. They could end the game. They don't They don't have the Corky, they don't have the set. They are only rely, they don't have the tools to deal with them. And Seraphine ulti is back up. I do think they can end the game here if they play it right. Does look like they're gonna focus the towers here as they are getting a little more poke on the champions. Seraphine ulti missing the Zeri, unfortunately, but it does look like they're trying to get the Udyr kill, and I think this is kind of an overstay on the side of Elysium, as Gragas dies. Does look like the Zeri does get rooted, but Santa able to actually do some damage as they have to wait for the wave. Super minion coming in, but Corky, 16 seconds. Need to focus the towers as the wave crashes here on the side of Elysium. Gopamine just getting his back stopped as the AFK backs. Does look like he shop keeps a little bit. As this Udyr's gonna end up getting out. No, Volley actually gets the kill. Senna getting shut down by the set. And kind of a misplay as Silent Elements is just sitting there at no mana as Corky comes in to try and clear, clean the kill. Yeah, that, now we're at a little bit of an overstay. And that's not good. Ooh. But does Silent Elements somehow... <laughs> the Seraphine penalty is already back up.
does look like Set's gonna try and chase her down here as she has no mana to deal with anything. And the Q comes out, but the W actually gives enough speed and the Blast Cone might actually save her life here as he still is just running this Seraphine down. Flashes and E's for the kill and gets a tower. That's some Chad set play, not gonna I, lie. What a set player, my that's the B, That's the BDE I need to see. <laughs> So, uh, I, this is, uh, where I say I don't like the demonic. I don't think Seraphine is the one doing damage in this comp. You have, you have Senna and Victor. I think the Rhyolite is much more important to her kit because we want to try and peel off the Udyr. We want to try and peel off the set once they engage on us. And it just offers so much peel. It buys so much space for your ADC. And it's just such a good item for her overall that... I think we should have gone for that instead of the demonic. Personally, I, though. I think Shirelia's was the buy here. Um, I can see why we didn't go Shirelia's, and that's just because we were farming Seraphine, so typically you tend to leave more ham into the uh, the AP aspect of it. But uh, even then, Riley's is generally a core item on Seraphine because it function it makes that champion just a whole lot stronger. It does look like they're going to contest this dragon, as this is going to be kind of a game-deciding fight. If Elysium gets killed here, I think uh, the pushing power is actually strong enough to, to get some work, but it does look like uh, Set might actually die here. Morpheus flashing the ult, does get stunned, gets the W, and this Corky package is doing absolute damage. Victor ult does get the kill, though. And it does look like the side of Elysium is just going to fall to the overall damage. They were very little... scattered in that fight, though. Yeah, I just... The positioning on Morpheus, I mean, you are the damage dealer as this Fasting Senna, and he just can't do anything. Just innate AoE abilities are just ripping him a new one. It feels of too, that Morpheus' positioning just... Is, he's just never where I think he should be or wants to be in these fights, you know? Like, I just feel like that they're always out of position. Yeah, fortunately... Earth Dragon, okay, four stack, that is a lot of mitigation, okay? The soul isn't that big, but man, that is an incredible amount of resistances as this Zeri is just starting a Baron by herself. There she goes, fighting. We see a teleport coming down too from the set to get to the objective a little bit quicker. Another teleport from the Corky. And I think they just do too much damage for Elysium to be able to respond to this in time. They are nope. going to try to fight this, maybe? I hope not. But Morpheus is stopping some backs there, so they might be able to get a pick. But it is a free Baron over to the side of literal water monkeys. Let's just see if they can do anything with it. Because yes, game Baron off the map is a good thing in general, but it's up to if they can do anything with it. I think from team fight to team fight, we can definitely see that they can do something. I mean, I, I don't think any of these team fights have gone in the favor of Elysium in the last maybe like 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Now, there, I just was think, a couple. there was a couple they had that were pretty decent. I mean, they're decent for sure, but I don't think any true victories, right? Yeah, they need to look for picks. I think. And uh, it's just really unfortunate now that they have Baron, like they can just force group. And uh Yeah, not not looking the best right now for the side of Elysium. That corky damage? I go for me. Disgusting. Incredible. What a fair and balanced champion. Look at that R, like Fair and balanced champion. What I want to see is more of the Seraphine tag. I haven't really seen many flash Seraphine ulties to really catch him off guard. I think Udyr's just gonna run zone here. It does look like a lot of the abilities are gonna miss as this inhib just falls. The Bromwell is down. This is where we flash Seraphine ulti. Like, we have the opportunity now. We can pull the trigger. It would be pretty big if they got a five man. Like, but five man just, Sarah ulti. But they aren't pulling the trigger, and I feel I... that would have been a really good time. I mean, did you see those Corky Rockets, man? I'm shaking in my boots. I don't want to get anywhere near that guy. Then kill him! He can't hurt you if he's dead. Kill them faster than they Gray can. Gray screen, ultimate, crowd control. It <laughs> does look like Udyr's forcing the play as Gragas is about to fall. Seraphine ulti comes out, I believe, but 
gets blocked well, by the Bobby. Does look like LX Starbucks trying to reiterate the damage, but our backline just getting clapped. Senna does end up getting a kill, but for a trade onto MVLD as this Baron shove just actually is getting the tower. Sarah, or excuse me, Zeri, uh, doing some massive work here. Zeri Beam. Good route by the side of Seraphine, but again, uh, you know, they just gotta try and clear the wave here. Maybe, like, big thing about all of this is just, like, there are times when we want to pull the trigger that we're not. Every time that Seraphine ults, it gets Braum walled. It's, like, a consistent thing, and, like, Braum is holding these walls for a while. We just need to exercise more patience because. It, it's just not working out, you know? Like, we need to hit everyone with the Seraphine ulti. Yeah, but we I just think, keep ulting a wall. I think holding also your your ultimate there, uh, you know, kind of prevents Braum from using the wall, which is actually probably mitigating, like, quite a bit of damage. Um, but, I mean, it does, it does seem... Like, just the overall damage on the side of literal monkey waters is just way stronger. I mean, Corky Rocket literally is almost one-shotting the back line of DZG. Yeah, I'm just looking at all the... I'm looking at all the farm right now, and kind of just, like, drinking it in. We have drinking the... it in. Drinking it in. We have the elders spawning in one minute, and once that objective spawns, you know both teams are fighting for that, and that is when the game will end. One minute till game over. Yeah, we need some. We uh, DZG needs to get some pressure on this mid lane. Get priority. Corky's gonna have package for this fight also, which is gonna be a huge problem for the side of DZG. I mean, Corky just didn't have package on that play, and. Uh, the backline got absolutely dumpstered on the side of the ZG, so... Yeah. Need to get that prio mid. Need to do something. Um, try and prevent Corky Package from obliterating the entire backline, but... Just gonna be really rough here, as a lot of damage comes out. Uh, even so, on the side. The literal monkey waters. Here it is, everyone grouping mid. Looking for probably that one last scuffle of the game. So they're peeling off to the Elder now, so this is where we have to make our like last stand. This is going to be the last fight of the game, unless they decide to sack and just go mid. Nope, Seth's going to get the ult. Corky ultimate coming down, but he just instantly gets killed as Morpheus gets a kill. Does look like the backline's getting chased down. Chinese spy kills Gopamine as if Zeri just able to just free fire. And it does look like Gopamine and, uh, or Silent Elements, excuse me, and Morpheus are trying to get some kills here. But Set ends up getting the kill. It is four dead on the side of Elysium as Morpheus just dies here. And it does look like, uh, monkeys are going to end the game. And that is one for one then. Looks like we'll be going on to game three tonight, Neves. What a series. Very unfortunate that DZ. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate that DZG just overstayed or didn't commit for towers on that play when they could have ended the game. I think a little bit of a misstep, but excellent comeback by the side of Monkeys. Um, just, you know, set going from being like 0 and 8 to 9 and 11. Excellent job, honestly. Very well played. They, they did pretty well, like, bringing that back. Like, it, it, it was close for a while, too. Like, there was a lot of, like, highs and lows for both teams throughout the course of the game. Though... Uh, we like those kinds of games. It means more content. More content. I do, I, content. I mean, I really, I really do. I really did enjoy that uh game. Actually, I think it was really good. Pretty well rounded. Both teams um doing an excellent job at uh you know making up for their lows, making up for their highs, etc. Um, you know, damage pretty well spread around the team. The seventy k. That is a lot of damage. That is some incredible damage, actually. Um, so, I, I'm, I mean, that is... Uh, and I think that's Corky. I believe that's Corky. Um, and that is... Uh, I mean, that's just really good to see. I mean, 70k damage at 48 minutes is nothing to scoff at. So, Elysium probably going to rethink their bands. They are blue side now. 
Um, so they can take away that Corky if they want to, or they can get it off the game. But I definitely do think that a new picker band look is is going to be by the play of pro possibly both teams, honestly. Both teams did well, and I'm honestly really excited for this third and final game of the evening. We've seen what both teams can do at their apex, and I want to see I want to see them bring their best into this last game, make it a real banger, one for the history books, a even. Banker, dude. <laughs> banker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Content. Content. Uh, okay, no. well, uh, that's our review of the damage meters. We're going to take a short break. Again, this is Neebs. This is Faye. Well, or, I mean, well, I'm not Faye, but anyway, Neebs and Faye, hello. Um, hello. And again, we'll see you guys in, uh, after a short break.
is me, Neebs, and that is Faye. Faye. And Faye. this is this is DZG's stream brought to you by Buff. Exclamation point. E U F F. In the Twitch chat, follow the link. Get the rewards, people. Let's go, baby. I'm loving the enthusiasm. Let them have it, Neebs. That's weird because that was probably the most least enthused. Uh... It sounded really enthused, but I mean, yeah, it was a no. joke either way. Uh huh, uh huh. You're breaking my heart, dude. Would you okay. like me to give you like a funny haha joke or? I would love that. You got any knock knock jokes? But we're into draft. We're into draft. So we've got <laughs> Ashman, <laughs> Diana Ban. Zary ban coming out from the side of DZG. No Corky. Jinx Very ban. Yeah. They're afraid. Morpheus is going to clap back, bro. He said no more games. I really think you get rid of the Corky over the Zary, to be honest. Personally, kind of agree. But maybe they won't let the game scale in 15 minutes. <laughs> But listen, hashtag scaling comps, am I right, oh, Lex? They picked it! They said, yo! This <laughs> our is our 50-minute game, bro! <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys at the finish line here. <laughs> I can't wait to be here for another 50 minutes with you. Uh, that's honestly the sweetest thing I think anyone's ever said to me. You're welcome. Okay, what's the reply, monkeys? Let me see it. There's the Seraphine steal. They said our Seraphine. Are they really just doing the salty run back but reverse? The salty spittoon but reverse. And here's the Udir. Man, this guy loves Udir. Dude, I don't know how you can play so much Udir. Dude, I love it too. This guy and I need to have a little powwow. I don't know. I, I could never play that much of that champion. I can't really ever play two champions back to back, so I understand. More power to him. Um... What are we gonna see, DZG? What was happening? Trundle. Oh, so here comes the trundle. Okay, okay. It's troll time. Pick your AD carry here so it's not pinched. Pick your AD carry here so it's not pinched. You're just really, like, praying for it, aren't pick you, your, bud? Pick your AD carry. I'm manifesting the energy. Pick your AD carry here <laughs> so it doesn't get pinched. Are you manifesting your ADC? It's Caitlyn. Let's go, baby. That's the play. You did it. Uh, you manifested it successfully. So the answer, I think, we're going to see is going to be... Does this guy play Felios? Dude, I want to see a Zaya, actually. Zaya Seraphine's actually so good, no cap. Could be a I Jin. Know. Leona. Leona Seraphine bot. Maybe that's mid Seraphine? It could always be mid Seraphine. It's going to be Morgana Thresh Pan. I can feel it in my bones right now. You, do you, are you feeling it in your jellies? I'm feeling it, Mr. Krabs. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? We're just gonna keep making obscure jokes throughout the entire like remainder of our Mis evening stuck Mr. together. Mr. Crab, Mr. Crabs, and Bikini Bottom, bro. It has to be a mid Seraphine, I think. Did I, they I, just? I think it is. Did they just ego take that? I feel like they did. Like I feel like that was just an ego take. It'd be a little funny if it was. Not gonna lie, I would. I would have a chortle about it. I mean. Silence got some spicy, like, things up his sleeve. Like, his fable to Kali support. I can't wait to see that. They're gonna pick it. Fable to Kali support. <laughs> it's I'm gonna feel happen. I can I'm feel really, it. I'm really feeling it now, Mr. Krabs. Hold on, let me manifest the energy of Kali support. <laughs> I'll join Kali support. I'll join you in manifesting the energy. <laughs> I hope Silent watches this stream and he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is Sarah. I, 
It might actually be Ari bot lane. I don't Ari! know. Ari! Yay! There's just I'm so much. I love if that, her. Listen, if that is Ari Leona bot lane, it, they're going to have before. one hell of a time. I've seen it before. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Whose champ is it anyways? Is that like a reference to a show? H yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, it looks like we do have a Nami Kaelin, Corky in the mid lane, Trundle really just needs some hard engage on DZG's uh, final pick here, and we're off to a wonderful start. Who's the last pick of the game? On the edge of my seat here, dude. Yeah, really? It's a, okay. Oh. Not, not that good of engage, I guess. But it does look like they're kind of trying to build for this 1-3-1 one, one comp on the side of DZG. This is um, a good choke comp. Yeah, and it all... Like, it, it, like having this 1-3-1 one, one setup also kind of negates the sheer amount of CC that they have um, on the side of Monkey Waters. Uh, or water monkeys, or uh, I'm just whatever. calling them monkeys at this point. I, can really I start should. calling them sea monkeys? Oh, man, they got the monkey, <laughs> man! <laughs> they picked the monkey! It's I'm a buff! The, I'm the monkey, man. Okay, so this is the best. A lot of engage, a lot of CC on the side of monkeys. I'm assuming that it's gonna be Seraphine Leona bottom. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling the Seraphine Leona bottom too. Uh personally I'm very terrified of the comp that monkeys have drafted for themselves. This is a very scary looking comp. If they get ahead, it's over. Any forced five V five is gonna go to their side. That's a lot of damage. It's a lot of CC. And to be honest, DZG does not really have that much of a rebuttal as far as crowd control goes. I mean, they've got damage on the side of Elysium. Um, and you can take away those tank stats with Trundle and just become an absolute monster and like run through the enemy team. But it's very hard to run through the enemy team when you're getting charmed, stunned, charmed, rooted, knocked up, charmed, rooted, stunned. You know, it's just a hard time. It really is. Um, but luckily, uh. if you steal enough tank stats, your DPS can DPS the DPS while the DPS are DPSing your tanks. Picking up what you're putting down. Are you stepping in what I'm shitting? <laughs> is is that the phrase? <laughs> I, I don't think that's the phrase. I don't think I don't think that's the phrase, my guy. You good? I think I'm having a stroke, honestly. <laughs> honestly, honestly, me too. I wasn't expecting to be here this late, but you know what? Here we are. Are you ready yeah. to suffer with me, pal? I've got some coffee now. I still have the tortilla chips, even though Trey was like, Who eats on stream? Oh. Um, uh, which is fine. Both yeah. of us eat on stream. I need, some, I need some nutrients, bro. I eat on stream all the time. ASMR needs eating while, he, while, we, uh, while we wait to get to game. You guys want to hear me eat some chips? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Give it to us. Give it to <laughs> So, hey, how do you feel about the draft? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second, I'm dying. Uh, I I really like the Wukong just because of the team name. It's it's really it's really making me giggle. Uh, once again, Trundle not going top lane when I think he probably should be going top lane. And you were uh, right, it is the Ari mid, which honestly it should have been. Seraphine ADC is much more normalized than Ari ADC. I think that. Graves kind of sucks in the jungle right now, as a jungle player. Yeah, you you know more about jungle metal metal <laughs> meta than I do. Yeah, it's two feet times the seven square of iron, um, <laughs> something metals silicone. Uh, uh the atomic but yeah. weight of iron. But I think, do can we not talk about science actually? <laughs> Um, or is that math? Just kidding. I know people. I know. Okay. But anyway, um, yeah, I think, I really do think that if Elysium gets ahead, 
they'll be okay because they can one three one as long as you're not letting the game go on too long on the plus side though if the game does go on for 50 minutes elysium has corky <laughs> and corky will kill their whole team very easily doesn't even gonna get touched um but ari buffs truly incredible I haven't as, seen Wukong in years, okay, as, honestly. As an Ari main, I am enthusiastic. Uh, are you? Are you, is that is that cheering for a different team? For I'm cheering sing, simply for the Ari. As long as the Ari does well, I don't care if she wins or loses. Wow. As, uh, as, as, uh, as happy as I am about her buffs and everything, she can't solo carry a game. <laughs> She's you not gotta, a carry. You gotta manifest the energy, bro. Just say True. Ari 10,000 times during the spectator delay. <laughs> I'm going to go and set up my ritual circle now. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> I'm speaking manifesting. Of, speaking of goodbyes, seven seconds into the delay, we're about to go into the spectator delay. Bear with us in this absolute monstrosity of a game. We're about to see DZG, Elysium, and Monkey Waters fight for the victory of week four of Runeterra. We'll see you guys in a couple minutes.
Welcome back, everybody, on your Saturday night chill vibe stream. This is the play for the day of night, and I'm joined here by Faye. Faye, how are you doing this evening? I am doing nothing but the chill vibes. How are we feeling about these keystones tonight in the jungle, Neebs? All right, I'm digging the I'm digging the lethal tempo by our boy Udir, but again, I just don't know about the PTA trundle. I think you need to really like press forward, but I'll tell you what, I do absolutely love this first strike by the boy Gopamine on Corky. I'm ready to see the damage. We got some airy play on the electrocute or not on the electrocute, excuse me, on the Nami. I got my keystones mixed up there a little bit. Caitlyn pulling out the fleet footwork. Good sustainability. Should be able to get a lot of poke on the Seraphine. This Leona, they're going to get smashed. I can feel it, man. I can feel the damage just pouring out of this Caitlyn. The real question is, is it going to be Lethality or is it going to be Crit, Caitlyn? What do you think, Faye? Honestly, I'm not too sure which one we're going to see. I think Crit, Caitlyn, is better. Damage hey, I, I gave you the answer. I talked about her you keystone. Did? You don't you don't take lethality Caitlyn with fleet footwork. That's troll That's, as heck. I don't know anything about Caitlyn stuff right now. Tree only plays like whatever he feels like playing and lately it's been a lot of Ezreal. Ew. Tree, we're gonna have to have a talk after this. It does look <laughs> like Udir's clearing the blue. Gonna look for this early topside gank. Pretty good kill pressure between the Wukong and Udir on this graves, but I'm hoping that our boy MBLD can do his best Whippo cosplay and just play Graves like an absolute menace. Look at him go. He's already smacking the monkey man around. And look at the zoning in the bot lane. They said no fun allowed. Get out of my get out of my kitchen. Uh, are, is that a reference? Never mind. Actually, okay, here we go. Um, so work in a restaurant. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes a lot more sense. I thought. <laughs> I thought you were trying to say something else. But it does look like the level <laughs> 2 comes in from bot lane. On the side, Gopamine takes a poor trade. Unfortunate for the boy, but he does have a lot of mana. Ari's losing a lot of mana. Our boy Gopamine getting hit by those Qs, but it doesn't matter because he's a clutch player. And here comes the Trunnel Gank on the top side. As he hits the auto, hits the auto, hits the Q, hits another auto. The flash coming out. Troll Pillar coming down. And it does look like they're going to get the kill as he does his best Cosplay a Blippo with MBLD first blood. Hey, let's go again. The first blood onto the graves. We like to see these this early, like all those early kills going on to our laners because we want them to be able to be self sufficient. Because this graves can generate their own their own lead from here on by themselves. That's one less lane that uh, Starbucks has to worry about. They can just go and focus on their mid lane and their bot lane and try and get those lanes ahead too. So, so far, so good. Let's hope that we just, again, generate the momentum and keep it going. Yeah, good crash by the Graves. I do want to say, I every time you say um, you love to see it, it reminds me of Jace and the nostalgia of our cast. Uh, good trade on the bot side. Um, but yeah, uh, Jace, I miss you. This kid's not the same. And it does look like a stun coming out. Charm Ooh, hits after the flash. What Ooh. a predict. Let's go. Chinese spy just centering down with that scope on the charm post flash. If you want, I could also say Poggy Woggies to remind you of Tony. That would just break my heart. So let's not do that. <laughs> and it does look like Udir's just coming down for this game. Udir is just all over the map right now. He's living his best life. He said, live in your head rent free. <laughs> the fear. The ward. Morpheus, ward also. Gets one auto attack. Doesn't actually get the kill. A little bit of a trade Nami. They should know udir has gone here, but the wave slow pushing. Does get a push a little bit back as he thins the wave. Morpheus looking to make some trades on this uh, Leona melee. And now we once again enter the classic laning phase lull where not a whole lot happens. But again, that's just, you know, how it is. Everyone's probably just trying to farm up, get their items, and then probably look for fights, waiting on all those uh, power spikes in the lanes right now. Uh, it looks as if, for right now, the Screws is getting out CS and kind of bullied off his wave up in top lane, which I wasn't quite expecting, especially after having gotten the first blood for one and for two being... Uh, have a little bit more range on the Wukong. Uh, 
We see in the bot lane, or in the mid lane at least, Ari has a book and a mana crystal, and she started with the crafting potion as well. Cole and Tyr on the Corky. So, not a whole lot happening, nothing really noteworthy. Did you just say Kraken Pushin instead of Corruption Potion? No, it's a Corruption Potion. Corruption I potion. could have sworn you said Kraken Pushin, and I was gonna say, what is what is the Kraken Pushin? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Product? Are we pushing P out here? Hello? I don't think that's very child friendly. That's not very neighborly of you, my guy. Yo, pushing product? That's pretty, that's a business opportunity, you know? I'm, I'm sensing God in this chilies tonight. <laughs> okay, a new deer's coming in for a return kill. Does look like Graves might try and get a kill here, but Leona shows up, and it does look like a 3-1 fight in the top lane. My boy PC Swag Sidon just saying, guys, I need a little help here. I am the monkey man. Protect the president. Yo... That Leona really just said they call me Mr. Worldwide. Really good roam though, and it does all, uh, it does take away from being able to like do, do anything about this Air Drake take. But like again, Air Drake really not that special. Um, so very unfortunate that MBLD gets the goon squad on him here. Sitting at the one one line now. And now. But Okay, I'm so, gonna ask you a question. Okay? What? Die. So we think we think one three one is the play, right? Yeah. Do we see Hallbreaker Trundle? Oh my god. Because we're about to see Hallbreaker Graves, and I really think, you know, at like 25 minutes into the game, if you can get double Hallbreaker, having double carries, uh, you know, mid lane. And then, you know, one carry getting jungle farm as Trundle is just, like, split pushing actually offers, like, quite a bit of gold value. Honestly, that's kind of big brain. Like, on paper, that sounds galaxy brain, and you have a big, beautiful brain. I just love that for you. Ooh. Gobamine putting the schmoves on that Ari. Yeah, you know what they say about big, beautiful brains, but it does look like we have a fight on the top side as Wukong gets the ultimate out. MLB just not actually trading any damage here, trying to get away. Double knock up the Q. MBLD just running as he gets hit, but it doesn't matter because Swag Sidon just has the damage to kill him. And I think that's kind of a misplay on the side of uh, MBLD. You got to get the E off and then the auto attacks for the E reset so you can get out of there fast. Yeah, he's not really like kiting. He's just running, which is never really a good thing because you got to play Graves somewhat like an ADC, you know? Yeah, and I think um, the Tavi boots coming out from Swag Sidon just really negates uh, Graves damage. I mean, uh, you know, we saw there that so I didn't got like a full combo and literally took like no damage at all. But again, MBLD needs to do a little better, I think, about auto attacking while being on the move, especially with fleet footwork being his uh, keystone. Like very important to be kiting. Yeah, and I honestly, with this team comp and like his lane, I wouldn't be opposed to MBLD also getting his own ninja tab eyes as well. You know, I feel as if it's a pretty good investment for him. Um, I think lane phase, yes. Uh, yeah, that's I what think with lane phase, though, though, then, like... Yeah, like, getting uh, the tab eyes for lane, and then at some point the mid to late game sell them for tab eyes, you know? I don't know yeah. how gold efficient that is, though. Or if it's I think, worth it. I think, personally, you just buy the Merc Treads. Um, because they just have an insane amount of crowd control, honestly. You are trying to split and, like, anchor the Wukong, but, like... <laughs> If Wu just leaves lane and you're taking towers, like, you want to be able to, like, get out of CC and, like, get out of there if they do converge on you, which I think Merc Treads, and then the Tenacity Legend uh, is, like, very important. I am interested, though, in seeing how they're going to approach this game, because who knows, maybe Graves doesn't get the whole breaker and Trundle gets it. And uh, they just, I mean, they he's, sitting on, he's sitting on on a long sword ruby and pickaxe like he's not gonna build that into anything besides hallbreaker they've yeah. already kind of like shown that he's building that but really need to get a lot more bot lane pressure so this leona just doesn't get to free roam um but it does look like they're looking to contest the herald which i think elysium just has to give up 
Uh, but Graves and Trundle are trying to go on this Wukong, pulling everybody off the Herald to engage. Good flash by the side of Starbucks. And this Herald should uh, reset, which, you know, Corky might TP so they can contest this, but they might just be giving this up as Wukong backs is going to get an item and we'll be able to teleport back into the game as Morpheus and uh, Silent Elements just trying to get plates bottling. Really good push off on that Herald. Yeah, I'm surprised that they don't actually manage to get to stick to it, but it's good that we're preventing them from getting any more objectives right now. What we want is to kind of see more pressure in the bot lane, though. Like, Seraphine's, like, pretty much laning by herself right now. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, she can wave clear when the wave crashes. Just, I think the big thing about that Herald play was uh, Corky has package, and they know how, like, detrimental having that uh, can be to a team. Um, but it does look like they're going to get the trade off on Harold, uh, which is good. Um, and Corky still has package available, probably just going to use it for the sake of using it here in a second. Um, so, yeah. He's, it looks like Gopamine might be looking at the top side of the map, which is really good. But from when I used to play with Gopamine, he's always had a really good awareness of what's going on around the map. So I think the Corky pick here is going to make this game a lot more interesting. Yeah, no package available though, kind of timed out, that's really unfortunate. It does get the Valkyrie down, the slow kind of being good, but it doesn't look like they're actually going to get a kill. As Wave is going to crash, Ocean Drake going over to the side of Monkey Water, and uh... Actually, Toronto might be able to get this steal here? No. Oh uh, no. Almost. A lot of farm going over to this Ari though. Uh, yeah, this farm. Ari is... She's going to be a little scary if they kind of just don't manage her. The new changes for her have been really, really big, and she- Big uh, engage, oh. Nami gets the Seraphine ulti, uh, actually connects to the Caitlyn, but she does get the flash over. Does look like Leona is just 1v1ing Morpheus. He's unable to do anything, but the sniper almost comes in, blocked by the Ari. Charm hitting Trundle. Leona coming in. Tons of CC on this Trundle as he's about to fall, but he does maybe get to walk out here as... Nope, Ari flashes, gets the W off damage. Charm on Nami again. Leona all coming down, and the CC is just unbearable right now on the side of Elysium. That was really well played for Monkeys right there. Uh, I think the uh, Ari ulting back to catch a Caitlyn ult uh, was a little unnecessary. I don't think it would have killed the Udyr, personally. Um... But I mean, they they still got a lot of picks down there. Their Ari is really ahead. Their bot lane is doing pretty well right now. So right now, all we it's all about momentum, you know. Like I I, I just keep repeating that, but it's up to if they can keep this going. Yeah, it does look like MBLD is taking something out of the Graves Reddit post and actually kiting as he runs away from this Wukong. So excellent <laughs> job, an excellent read here. But he does look like he's about to get all into Swag side and. Just decides to keep fighting. Does look like MBLD is says, you know what, man? I'm not going to let it happen. But Leona's coming in. Does get the knockup. Does get the uh, R backwards. Uh, confused a little bit. But does look like MBLD might actually get the damage here. Uh, oh, oh, the tower. Let's go, oh. baby. <laughs> That's what I like to call mechanics are happening. Yes, the R by the graves almost heckered it up. But that's fine. Yo, MBLD said mechanics are for cars, so you can call me Lightning McQueen. Oh, okay. I gotta go. <laughs> Someone cancel her, please. <laughs> Holy. Final Fantasy 14 taught me that one. You're welcome. It does look like the Herald's crashing, not going to be able to do anything as it does hit the tower, does get the damage off. But Leona says, no, I'm going to poke you in the eyeballs because that's what martial arts is about. And it does look like the bot is going to back and probably head mid here. Well, right now we're seeing them closing the gold lead with good use from the Baron. Or not the Baron, the uh, Nasher. They get the first but, tower. Okay, is it Nasher? Is it Baron? What is it, Faye? Wait, what did I call it? <laughs> It's Harold, baby! <laughs> I'm trying my you, best. Bro, you gotta give mommy, you gotta give mommy Shelly her do rights. Okay? <laughs> Yo, this hall breaker is just coming in clutch. This man is actually just so tanky. He is gonna get hit by the three v one again. Dude, they just said MBLD is not allowed to play the video game tonight. 
I think Swag Sidon's just kind of salty. He got clambered two games in a row, but um, that's okay because Leona missed the ultimate uh, with a good dash by the side of uh, Dude, MLD. This 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 Leona literally said, "See you later, Seraphina." Just left. And then well, he uh, autoed the Seraphine, wrong group Seraphine hug. does a good job at just wave clearing and also like, you know, I, it's not that she Seraphine's out fails, good at but she's, in gonna, her own she's lane. gonna be, yeah, she's gonna be a lot more useful, I think. Seraphine um, will always be useful. It doesn't really matter what you do. She's always useful just because of how her, uh, uh, because of how her kid just is, you know? I would agree. Um, it does look like NBL is getting some trades off and this hallbreaker buff is just so good like it really just changed the lane state of the game and he also did buy tobbies by the way i don't know if you noticed that but... yeah no i did i mean he want he wants to lane kingdom and realistically speaking um if it sh he's good he, like he said earlier he wants to anchor the wukong and the wukong is probably going to consistently answer him so having the tab eyes isn't like the worst idea in the world that's a really good trade by the uh, by uh, DCG's bot lane there as it's 2v3 and still manages to chunk somebody out. This Graves is getting absolute pressure on this top side as he just is out poking and out damaging this Wukong. Wu's going to go look uh, to back here and then maybe TP to save tower, but I don't think he's going to be able to as it's going to fall after this wave shoves into the top side. Then we just have a little bit of a little dance happening in the mid lane. You know how it is. The old boogie woogie. The old... Uh, boot scoop boogie. That's a line dance song. I don't know if you've heard of line dance in gym needs. That was terrible. Bro, I'm from Ohio. We invented line dancing. <laughs> oh my god. I hated it. And now we see them posturing for this dragon. Who do you think is going to be able to win this fight over here, Neebs? I think Corky has package. It hasn't panned over to him. Um, I think, I believe he does. He should hope. have package. And hopefully he uses it in time, because I'm. if he did grab it early, I think it's going to time out soon. He does have package. He's looking to make the play. It's just so scary, because they have so much crowd control. Package actually falls off as it's not used at all. That's kind of a misplay. As Gopi W's forward without package. Nami engaged going in, but Ari just killing the back line. Ends up getting dragon by the Udyr. And the timeout on the package actually just ruins the fight for DZG Olympus. As Ari flashes forward, gets the charm and the Q, they're they're just re wrecking them with the amount of sheer CC they have, but Graves might get a rebuttal. Tower. They need to communicate the quirky package better. Yeah, I just think he sat in that bush and waited for too long. It's very hard into their team, because like, if you quirky package, you're just going to instantly get full CC'd. Um, which is like unfortunate, but like you gotta use it if you're gonna pick it up. Like they just grabbed it way too early there, I think. Yeah, it, he could have grabbed it too early. He or they could have just like not pulled the trigger like soon enough. It's either way, they need to be more proactive. I hope. I, all I want for them is to like, just get one play with this quirky package, because if they can, they just. They should win that fight, but right now, uh, Monkey is just looking pretty ahead of the curve right now. Everyone's looking pretty intimidating on their team. Ari is really strong. Looks like we're going into. I'm pretty sure it's items for Horizon Focus next. No, Shadow Flame. It's. Looks like Shadow Flame with a Hex Tech and a Codex. Because, uh, Horizon Focus uses an easy large rod. Hey. So I'm going. I think it's the opposite, right? Uh, Shadow no. Flame is yeah, yeah. Shadow Flame has the needless large rod into it because it's a 100 AP item. So they're building Horizon Focus right now. Okay, I know it's one of the two of them. I can't remember at the top of my head. It's but fun. Either... I understand. Um, here comes Graves though in this 3v1 as he tries to escape, but I think he just gets charmed and killed here. Uh, the Flash and the Ultimate coming out to try and save his life. Uh, the Seraphine ulti hitting two members of the side of Elysium as Nami Wave tries to disengage, but it does look like some damage is going off. Morpheus kind of dies for the sins of Graves, and MBLD kind of jabated his team there. Yeah, he got three people killed, but I mean, they're pushing on the opposite side of the map in top lane. They get the inner. 
Uh, looks like they're back. They have to back now because they're dropping a Rift Herald. Wukong's backing to answer what's happening in the top lane, but I don't really think he needs to anymore. Yeah, he's Yeah, Trundle it. needs to just back. I don't. I mean, I don't know why he walked so far back um, without any contest, but it does look like Harold's gonna crash into this tower and take this in him, which might actually be okay for Elysium if they can taper the bleeding and get this free farm on Corky. But he gets charmed and he gets annihilated by Ari's four and O oh damage. And once she gets Horizon, by the way, he's dead there. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. <laughs> so really good looks on the side of Ari for these picks, but opening in him at 20 minutes when there's a Corky, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, Right now, like, you'd think of having this open in this in hip down is bad, but honestly, it's really good for them because this is giving them a, re a reliable source of gold income into their base for their carries. Which hopefully, like you said, they give it to Quirky, who desperately needs to scale right now. Their win con now at this point is, uh, like you said, tapering off the bleeding and trying to make it all into the late game. Yeah, it does look like uh, Graves is going to build the shield bow next, giving him a little more defensive stats and being able to stay in lane a little longer. Trying to get this hall breaker really working and split pushing the map. Uh, but I think the side of Elysium really needs to break away this mid turret so they can actually like open the map a little bit up to themselves. But once again, don't really need to go anywhere if your Corky's just free farming gold in the mid lane, which is yeah. What I want to see is I'm just like trying to establish a little bit more presence on the map and just making sure we have good vision around our objectives and like at key points of the jungle so that way at least we know where the enemy team is. Otherwise we should always be assuming like somebody's in our jungle somewhere, you know? But if we can get that vision that's like in our jungle then maybe we could look for picks to try and help us get back in the game. Yeah, I think um I think picks might be the best bet, but it does look like monkeys are just trying to force fights as the Ari charm comes out, hits Nami, and Silent Element splashes, does get, uh, dodges the wave, but his wave comes in, um, and looks like Chinese Spy is caught out here in the back line, not really able to do anything as a huge shutdown goes over to Corky. Does look like they win that fight, uh, four or two dead, uh, with zero casualties on the side of DZG Elysium. Big wave mid, about to be picked up, hopefully by Corky, or he's going to grab this package, run to Dragon, and Graves is just going to split push. But just offer them a lot more benefit um, to their split pushing game, but I think Corky really needs to pick up this gold. Does look like a TP is coming down from both players. Package still available, does look like he's going to get nothing off. Corky package coming in, going on to the Seraphine, but Gobamine decides to walk away instead of chasing into that free uh, Seraphine kill. How do you feel about that double TP? I feel like it kind of unnecessary. They didn't need it. They didn't need it. I think they should have sent Corky, who had package, and leave Graves and Baze, because look at all the farm that they let drop to the tower, you know? Like, they didn't need both of them there. They only need a little one. Yeah, and I think Corky package uh, speed buff offers enough to, like, get there. I think he was just in trouble, or th thought his team was in trouble. However, yeah, I, mean, I do think... Yeah, I mean, the was looking for the engage. Yeah, if you if you see that Seraphine and chunked by that Corky package, I think you just go for the kill there. Yeah. Uh, also. I, I, I can understand the hesitation considering he is still, like... He probably feels like he's more behind than what he is. So that's probably where the hesitation came from. But he's... He's catching up, which is what's important for right now. Yeah, that big shutdown was really huge. Um, really influxed a lot of gold. He's now 1-2 with a uh, bounty score on him, which is crazy. Bounty system, stupid. Changed my mind. I, I can't because you're right. <laughs> and now R is going for the Zhonya's for her third item, which is a pretty good call with this comp. Uh... We see Leandre's on the Seraphine here as well. We have... I'm hoping that this Wukong will be able to bring enough AD damage for his uh, his team, considering they don't really have an, a traditional ADC, you know? Otherwise, we have like a lot of magic damage on the side of monkeys. Yeah... I don't... I don't know why... Morpheus built Storm Razor, though. Like, I think that's kind of not the play. Um, 
I don't know about this, but we'll see. Okay, see and it. It, it does look like Graves is is kind of getting collapsed on. He does have team backup, um, but should be able to still like anchor um, some players into this top side, which is really just what you want to be doing. You just want them to live. And it does look like Trundle is building Hallbreaker. Uh, it could be Sterix Gage, but I don't believe it will be. I really think we're about to see a Hallbreaker Trundle, and I would love that. Absolutely Honestly, love that. we were talking about earlier the, the the good old one three one comp, but it looks like these guys are poshing for the Baron. I think they're just trying to bait it though for them to come in through a choke for the Seraphine ulti. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, I mean, Corky now has more farm than Ari, um, just from that soup uh, inhib buff. Uh, or like being taken at 20 minutes, it's like pretty big, but it does look like they're trying to bait out um, the side of Elysium on this Baron play, but I mean, that's a lot of resistances that are falling, uh, you know, and your team's about to take a massive amount of damage. Just keep letting them tank the Baron, let the resistance fall. Looks like a fight. Seraphine ulti hits quite a bit of people as DeAndre Jarvin kills Nami, and it does look like Kaelin gets the shutdown. Wukong still on Kate. Morphe is able to get out of there as Graves is just tanking so much damage. The Corky damage, insane for the side of DZG Elysium. Like, come out and say it. Uh, the Seraphine ulti there was really good, but I feel that she needs to be holding it until she can see the Corky so we can catch the Corky in it, who's doing a lot of damage. Not only that, but I don't. I think it was a really. A uh, bad misstep from Water Monkeys to take that inhib at like 20 minutes because 20 minutes is too early to take inhib. Like, you see it with the Corky. Like, look at how much farm Gopamine has now because of the early open inhib. It funneled a lot of gold and resources into him, and now he's a he's a force to be reckoned with on the side of Elysium. Yeah, six minutes of just free farm mid, and then also, like, your carries are no longer catching the wave because your wave is like perma pushing. Like, absolutely a huge detrimental and i think a blunder play on the side of uh monkeys like a lot of teams in lower elo in general just always assume oh getting in hip open is really good it's a lot of map pressure and yes it's a lot of map pressure but unless you're able to close out the game in the next two or three minutes or on the next push it's really not as worth it as you think it is yeah, you just can't act on the tempo if you don't have, uh, you know, a team that can facilitate taking the inhib early. Um, and, and again, like this team, like is pretty early game. So like I could understand it if they had pressured the side lanes and got those, uh, you know, other towers down, but they just didn't, uh, which is like very unfortunate. Does look like uh, Graves gonna keep uh, Wukong anchored here on the top side. Fallbreaker doing some massive work. Corky with package, TP's to the bot side is looking for this dragon play even if they get the dragon i think corky just makes a big play big damage on the side of corky package looks like a fall uh seraphine ulti actually misses everybody as starbucks is running them down but gopamine just doing an absolute metric ton of damage as ari takes the blast cone gets out gopamine w's forward looks to keep hit hits the r misses the q hits another r as a, a, oh oh that dang. was a little overzealous but meanwhile the top lane Look at him go, getting the inhibitor open at 30 minutes in the game. Now we're seeing a lot of pressure coming up on the top lane of the map. If we could try and replicate that on the bottom side, that'd be, they could possibly consider talking about a Baron play. Uh, I do think that if they get this next tower, it's good. Um, but afterwards, I think you absolutely yeah. need to reset. Like you should not be shoving in this next wave. Yeah, they, I think they need to be leaving. Like the Navi has the right idea of leaving here. Nami almost just said, F you guys, I'm getting out of here, bro. And anyways, good play. Sterix Gage on the trundle. Weak mental. Should have been splitting. Prove me wrong. <laughs> one three one. Split push meta is the only meta. Embrace. Truly embrace. Well, I mean, honestly, with how much gold was influxed into the Corky. Honestly, like, it probably wouldn't even be the worst idea. That it wouldn't. I'm telling you, man. Just put him top <laughs> lane near the Baron. Put your carries mid, they outrange everybody, you anchor the side lanes, the, you know, double carry in a Nami mid, like, with that much range, like, you're not, you shouldn't die, like, you just shouldn't. Um, you, you shouldn't, but you also need to remember there's an Ari and a Seraphine. Bro, just dodge skill shots for him. 
true. I, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You're, you're, just, you're just a superior gamer to me. <sighs> what a Chad. Yeah, I got that BDE, bro. <laughs> Duh. Here comes some massive Corky damage, just hitting one R as Ari has a flank here though, looking for that Corky. Misses, and she the, misses charm. the charm. An ultimate out by the Ari. This is where you push mid because there's absolutely no way she gets on your carries here. Please push mid. Please just push, push mid. mid. Just go mid. Manifest, 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 <laughs> mid, 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 Go mid, mid, mid go mid, mid, go mid. Push lead. Yeah, run him down, Trundle. Look at him go. Oh my god. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, it does look like everyone is going for this Graves, but it doesn't even matter. He might actually get out of here. He does shield broke Hawk Q. He's just buying time for the rest of Elysium to take this mid tower, which they do, and then continue pushing. I don't know if I would she would have said everyone volleyed. Cause like you lose a tower for that, you lost your Seraphine. And you only get one singular graves out of it. I'm not too sure that's worth it for water monkeys there. Next time. Yeah, I think Elysium just makes a huge play uh, on this Baron buff. I would like them to get a pick first and to establish a little bit more pressure. And, oh no, they're, they're, I think their pressure is fine. Yeah, I just want them to get a pick first before they try and really commit to the Baron, you know? And now we have a blue buff going to the Corky, who is once again resetting. We have a pretty generous gold lead between Elysium and Water Monkeys. This, right now, as far as I see it, this is anyone's game. They feel pretty neck and neck in terms of power, and I feel as if one misstep could really shift the power of the game. I feel as if right now Elysium is kind of driving for right now, but as long as they don't lose their tempo, they should be fine. Yeah, I think, uh, as you said, it is everyone's game. Infernal Soul coming up for the side of uh, Water Monkeys here incoming, but I think they're just going to try and run it top. Oh? Oh, good flash. Good, uh, another good flash, though, as Leona goes on the back line, but they just don't have the damage. Like, Corgi's about to do a bunch of damage. Here comes Ari, he did, they do catch out the Corky, but Graves is doing some massive work on the boss side. Does look like uh, he's gonna try and end the game, but Trundle just running down this back line, trying to prevent backs, trying to just buy time for this Graves to come over, maybe assist him or just get the inhib. Does look like the inhib grab goes down as Graves just becoming an absolute slip push minish. I mean, I they're, just... they're doing exactly what they need to do with this kind of a comp. Like... They're just putting pressure somewhere to let Graves split push the game away. Like, they have two inhibitors down, a lot of minions in their base. Graves is kind of just like, Graves is living his best lane right now. He's He had sold the PvE edition of League of Legends. He's got to try and prevent this soul, though, um, I think. But it does look like Ari's going to get a lot of damage here. The healing shield bow proc does look like there's anti-healing on the side. Uh, damn. Just very unfortunate, but Corky's coming in with a package ulti, uh, or package TP, excuse me. Um, but does look like he's gonna get charmed, but nope, the unstoppable does look for the kill, but doesn't get it, gets stunned, and just a overall kind of greedy force on the side of Elysium as uh, Water Monkeys gets Infernal Soul and then maybe walks to Baron, most likely takes. It's like, uh, it's like one of the coaches said, there's there's uh, desperation plays that you can make, and I definitely think that was a desperation play from the side of Elysium, trying to prevent the soul point. They're going to lose an inhibitor for that, might even lose a Nexus Tower, because there's only uh, Trundle and Navi up right now to stop this push. And it's 10 seconds on the Graves. This could even be the end of the game here on the side of Elysium That's for such an egregious GG. play. Yep. Unfortunately, just tried to salvage and stop the play instead of just waiting for the entire team to be up. Um, and that's gonna conclude game three of week four, Runeterra. Honestly, we wanted a banger for our last game, and that game was 
in anyone's uh, hand right there. Uh, Honestly, fairly neck and neck. All of these games were like good. Like I thought, I thought they were like pretty. I I loved game two. I thought game two was really good. This past game, as you said uh, previously, anybody's game. Good damage out from mostly everybody. Um, really good plays here and there. Both teams kind of entered sometimes. Both teams really played well um, at other times. So it was kind of nice to see for sure. I like it when uh, things are even on the side of both teams, just because I think it keeps things interesting and it never makes it boring. It can I like when they can very clearly go anyone's way. It's just they made that that one uh, salvage play at the very end of the game, and because of that, they just lost off of it. They had so many people alive just push down the rest of the base, and with it or open in Hib already, it was just easy for them to just run it down. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, a little unfortunate, but, you know, it's it's week four Runeterra. Uh, this league is still anybody's game, and definitely a lot to learn from these plays, so hopefully both teams reviews the games, uh, sees what they need to improve on, and really steps it up for week five of Runeterra. Does look like there's going to be an MVP poll in Twitch chat. Uh, oh. So be looking out for that, and let's see who they think the MVP is for the game. Man, hopefully everyone gets some poor, st not some poor, some good snacks. I don't know why I said that. But hopefully someone gets some good snacks. You guys are chilling out the rest of your Saturday night. And you're just absolutely bullin', baby. Still waiting on the MVP stats. Still letting people vote. This is it, team. Let's see what everybody thinks. It does look like the poll... Uh, has been finished, and Versia has won MVP for the night on the side of Water Monkeys. But that is going to conclude our stream. Guys, remember, uh, this stream was brought to you by Buff, exclamation point, B-U-F-F, -F, uh, Twitch chat. Follow the link and, uh, reap your rewards, guys. But, uh, Hopefully, we'll see you guys Thursday next week. Watch DZG Olympus, your, your handsome caster, Neebs, playing that AV carry role. And we will see you guys next time. Faye, anything you want to conclude the night with? You guys have a good one. Woohoo! All right, and we'll see you guys.